Rode microphones are the official microphones of Be Terrific. Find out more at RodeMic.com. Welcome to the Michael Artsis Show. I'm Michael Artsis. You're the Terrifics. You make Be Terrific special. Thanks so much for joining us. You can reach out to us on social media at Be Terrific TV. And of course, you can also join our Slack chat, join the conversation in real time. That is beterrific.com slash Slack. And you can join all of our Terrifics in the Slack chat in real time, 24 hour conversation. When we're live, we can bring the conversation live and, and bring it on air and ask your questions and comments on air. You guys are amazing. We had a fun couple of weeks. We did Ben Harrow out in Bethesda, Maryland, and then we did the Triumph Games, and then we went and did the Back to the Future cars, and they were amazing in Massachusetts with the Shays at their farm. Really a lot of fun, unbelievable stuff we've done the last uh, you know two and a half weeks, but it's good to be back. Here we are in studio, and we're not going anywhere for a while. At least we're not planned to. So I'm excited about that. Uh, today's show is going to take a little bit of a serious turn, though, as we talk a little bit about Katrina. Katrina was 10 years ago, and we brought Matt McDermott back in studio. He's an amazing photographer. Matt was there shortly First after. First off, hey, good to see you, brother. It's good to see you, yeah, man. man. Thanks for uh, having me back. Thanks for coming. Absolutely. Um, you were there when Katrina, like right after Katrina happened. Uh, yeah, yeah. So what happened, actually? I was in Niger documenting famine at the mm -hmm. time for AmeriCares, which is who I, last time I was in here, we talked about Nepal, yeah. which I was there. But uh, I had just, literally when I was on the flight back, we were getting news as far as what was happening in New Orleans, as far as the levees break, you know, that the hurricane was hitting. I don't think the levees had broken yet, but the hurricane was hitting. And, uh, you know, for the New York Post, I was coming back to, uh, you know, I had nothing else lined up. I was gonna be working for the Post, the New York Post, the local paper in the city. And it's so a, I, it's, I immediately... It's, it's funny how uh, everybody who works at the Post thinks of it, usually thinks of it as a very local paper. Yeah, it's yeah, fifth it's, it's largest, fifth largest circulation paper. Yeah, yeah absolutely. In the nation. And I mean, you can, you can get it in, in, you know, down in the bowels of Mexico. You can see yeah. the Post. It's three days later. And of but. course in Boca. <laughs> <laughs> of course in Boca. But so, so I'm flying back and we hear about that this is going on. And so immediately when I hit the ground, I call, call the desk and talk to the editor. I'm like, listen, I'm back because I'm the guy that they usually send for hard hitting, anything physical demanding kind of stuff. And he's like, ah, you know, I wish you got back to, you know, a day earlier. Um, I was waiting to hear from you, but you know, we had to send somebody else. I was like, shit, okay. I was like, listen, if anything happens, you know, I'm ready to go, and, you know, so you let me know. About a day and a half later, I get a phone call. And he said, listen, our guy down there right now uh, is having a hard time, just lost his car. Uh, wow. to the water, and we are getting our ass beat by the Daily News. He's like, I need you to get down there immediately. So just got back, literally just landed from Niger doing famine in Africa, which is, you know, death and destruction, and then to be flying right back out the door down in New Orleans to, uh, to cover Katrina. And so you land in Katrina, and the way I understand it, um, first of all, the way I really under, the way we believed it at the time, I think all of New Orleans was wiped out and uh, it, it, it was impossible to get through anywhere. But the way I really understand it is it was a, it was a mostly a very concentrated area of New Orleans that uh, really sustained the worst damage. Well, all right. So what happened? So, you know, I, you, you don't know what you're going into. Sure. You now, the reports that you're sort of getting feeling is the, the whole place is underwater and there's no access. So immediately I'm making phone calls to people who are heading down there, uh, my agency Polaris, who is running people down there already. Turns out they have a safe house within the zone, so I have a place to go, fantastic. But I'm also finding out like, all right, how do I get in? So I set it up that we fly in, and, and I'm, oh, by the way, I'm giving this reporter, and I also tell the post, because the reporter has to come. I was like, give me somebody that can kick ass. Yeah, somebody with some chops. Uh, they give me this guy that they just hired from California. The biggest thing he'd ever done was followed Arnold Schwarzenegger around. And I was like, oh shit, man. I was like, have you ever been in anything nasty? He's like, well, I followed Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was like, that's not the type of nasty I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, needless to say, so we're flying down and, you know, and I'm giving him a little bit of like, listen, by what I'm hearing, you know, there's gonna be a lot of death you're gonna see. It's gonna stink, it's gonna smell. We may not be able to eat. We may even have nowhere to sleep. I don't know, are you ready for this? And he's like, no, I'm not. And I'm like. Fantastic. Okay. That's good. Great. Wonderful. At least you're honest. Yeah. 
know, and uh, plus he was like some religious nut, and I'm already swearing, and he's like, this doesn't work. So, anyways, but so what? Wait, what happened with that? Did you guys make it? No, no, together? no. Well, I get so so we fly into Baton Rouge. Yeah. Okay. And fly into Baton Rouge. By, by the way, I, I want to uh, tell people that. Uh, you know, we talked about this last time you were on the air. I want people to be authentic. I want them to be who they are on Be Terrific, right? And we talk about mostly really positive stuff, and sometimes we have to talk about serious issues. Yeah. But I don't, uh, I don't personally swear on air, but I don't put any... Yeah, no, we're going to try to curb this amount of swearing that we did from last time. But what I do want to say is I don't... <laughs> My mom gave me a lot of shit for that. <laughs> I don't, uh, while we're a very family-friendly program all the time, I, I don't tell anybody else how to be on air. I want people to be themselves. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. No, we went through this last time. Yeah. And and it so, was great, but yeah. I said fuck way too many times. Okay, so, so we're going we're gonna to limit it then? <laughs> we're going to limit, we're gonna try to limit the fucks in the show. Only to what it needs to happen. <laughs> yeah, it loses its impact right. anyways. We're, we're kind of joking. You know, it's funny because we're kind of joking here, and it's a very serious topic, but you and I talked about as reporters, as video journalists, as photojournalists, uh, part of the way to get through is to joke about everything. I, I yeah. said, I, I mean, people don't know this, but behind the scenes, uh, you'll be at like a cop's funeral and, and joking around. You're not joking around about the funeral. You're just talking about life with the other yeah, people. Yeah, I mean, you spend the amount of time that you do in, in, you know, nasty situations and dealing with pain and misery. And, and you know, it's, you've got to have some levity. Yeah. Or else you're just going to go insane or you're going to just drink yourself to death. Right. So, anyway. Anyway, so back to, so we fly into Baton Rouge. Yeah. And I rent two matching red four-wheel drive SUVs, uh, big Chevy Suburbans, which was amazing we can get that, but got sure. that. I immediately do a rampage around Baton Rouge, fill it up with anything I can get as far as supplies, toilet paper, Jack Daniels, chef cases of Chef Boyardee, anything that you can eat, you know, and, and beef jerky. And most important thing is I got yellow flashing dome lights as far as, and that's one thing that, you know, is a secret as far as, as a journalist, if going into a hot zone of any kind, I mean, you're not allowed to go with, with red, red or blue. Right. Okay, but you go with the yellow flashing light, amazing how far that'll get you through, uh, through you know, checkpoints and whatnot sure. as far as it gives you a, a, a level of, of uh, you know, importance. Because generally most people don't want journalists around. Right, absolutely. So, yellow flashing dome lights. So we pack up and we start heading in. Where'd you find the yellow flashing dome lights? At a Napa Auto Parts store. Amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. It was that simple. So, so you know, again, so now we're, what we're hearing, you can't even get in, right? Mm -hmm. The whole place is, is swamped out and underwater. But we, we take back roads going in, and, uh, you know, on the way there, it's, it's, it's weird because there's no traffic whatsoever. There's nobody around. I mean, it's, it, you feel like you're just going. It's almost like a Walking Dead sort of show mm -hmm. where, you, you know, we're on these roads in the middle of sort of, you know, lower Louisiana, and there's no cars anywhere. There's no people anywhere. And we, you know, as we get closer to some of these little towns, you know, the, the reporter was in the car behind me. I was like, listen, I was like, stay right on my rear bumper. I was like, we have a lot of supplies. You know, we're going into areas, you know, we need to get to New Orleans, but we're going to go to Oconee areas that have been affected that, you know, we're also rolling in at night. I was like, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know, what, you know how desperate people are. It but is, we it have stuff that people are going to want. And it's got to be scary for you a little bit because it's the unknown. Even though you're big and tough and, and, and you've done this before, you're big and tough, but you can't take on yeah. 30 people. Yeah, and you don't know what you're going into. I mean, my agency actually told me, like, listen, if you can find a shotgun somewhere, you may, you know, try to buy one. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, as far as for self-defense, because people are, were shooting each other all over the place. Wow. Did Which, you do that? I actually stopped a couple stores. There was nothing. So. Wow. <laughs> wow. But, um, so I tell the reporter, I'm like, listen, stay right on my ass as okay. far as when we're driving, and we're going to drive at a pretty pretty fast clip and if we, if we go into areas and people start approaching the car do not stop keep your windows rolled up do not stop for anything you know and I was like and if someone literally starts attacking your car I don't give a shit hit them right okay because w what they want is they want the car they want your stuff and they're gonna freaking probably kill you right okay so you know one of the first towns we're rolling into you know all these people start converging on the cars and I'm, I'm zooming through of course what do you do he stops yeah <laughs> and this massive man starts walking towards his car. So I, I lock up the brakes. I jump out of the vehicle. And I start screaming. I was like, fucking hit the goddamn gas. What are you doing? Yeah. And all of a sudden, the guy starts pounding on his windshield, and other people start coming and finally hits the gas, gets out of there. We get out of the town. Pull. I, I have him pull over. He's in tears. He's just right. in tears crying. Wow. And I was like, what the fuck did I tell you? Stay on my bumper. Don't stop for anything. Needless to say, so... By all the reports, you can't get in New Orleans. We drove all the way in. You had right in, right in. Drove all the way. Was in. Was it hard? Nope, nope, nope. Once we got through that, I mean, it was again. 
it was nighttime by the time we come in and it's creepy there's no lights anywhere wow. and every now and then you see just sort of people like walking around like zombies wow. you know and, and you can't see anything there's no you know at this point there's no rules you know you have no stoplights you have no street lights you have nothing and you're trying to find and I'm trying to find a location by a map of where we're trying to go and but there was full access you know everything that the government said that the president said oh you can't get down there complete horseshit they could have brought buses down there at any point and, and gotten people out and why do you think they didn't? I have no idea. Because buses seem like I mean, the most simple thing. Yeah. Where to put them, I don't know. I mean, listen, but we, didn't, we didn't see National Guard for at least a week and a half. It's ridiculous, Yeah, right? FEMA didn't show for, for, I think, a week. So uh, this was President Bush. This was Michael Brown, who was the head of FEMA at the time. Yep, yep. I mean, um, all New Orleans police was all gone. And, Every, and, I mean, and everybody just left. They just left these people to The rot. New Orleans police were gone. Yep, yep. Do I mean, you think that was for their I mean, own was, safety? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was free reign. It was just But I mean, it wasn't reign. that the, they gave up and said, we're out of here. It's that they had to say that because. Hey, man, I don't know. There's no have to say that as far as, I mean, this is your town. These are your people. So you, so it was for their own safety, but for their own. I, because they, what I, what, you know, I'm not, listen, I don't know what people are thinking. I can only speak for what I went through and what yeah. I saw. But, uh, you know, I mean, if you're a cop and this is your city and you just bail, you right. know, as far as, uh, you know, that's. A lot of people, what you heard as far as raping and killing, you know, that went on. Cause that's cause, that's cause what it, digital, the president, uh, you know, some uh, people, some politicians that went on at one point saying, oh, the reports you're hearing is false. Completely untrue. I'm in the Slack chat right now, and that's what Digital Phil wanted to know. He said he had heard, he remembers 10 years ago, he had heard that there was a lot of raping, pillaging, yep. looting. Uh, is that stuff true? Yes, 100% true. Wow. 100% true. In fact, the, how, the safe house that we had set up, Yeah. So we pull up, turns out a, uh, a guy was breaking into homes and was killed right outside the safe house the night before. And because there, there was homeowners that were staying that were all armed. Um, we heard, you know, in the Superdome. Um, what? I mean, we, we, you know, we're hearing reports, I mean, girls were getting raped. People, were, people were, were starting to fortify themselves together with people that they felt comfortable with in locations. Mm -hmm. And, and literally fortifying themselves. I mean, there's roving gangs going around. Why can't we just be human beings in that situation? Well, we'll get to that in a little bit as well. All right, let's, can we take a look <laughs> at some of the pictures? We have a bunch yeah, of pictures. Yeah, let's, let's, so let's take it, and these are amazing photos. Again, you go into this horrible uh, area at this horrible time to take pictures to show us and future generations the, the despair. Yeah. Yeah, and which you know, and again, I mean, it, it's I mean, you know, any any when you go in these areas, it's it's tough. You're on your own. Yeah. You know, I mean, generally speaking, you know, military doesn't want you there, or law enforcement doesn't want you there, or the people that are there, you know, you're you're coming in from the outside. I, you know, I mean, you're very much you get really got to watch your back at all times. Yeah. You're very much you know on your own. This is the welcome to New Orleans sign. If we go full screen on it, uh, you can see that. I mean, that's a Chevy Suburban uh, from probably the 1980s. Uh, next to a minivan, and there's a pickup truck, and I mean, these are all done. Yeah, and all you know done. what happened? I mean, when the levees broke, I mean, life just, I mean, the water just came in. And yeah. so, uh, you know, I mean, you can see there, there's, uh, you have cars that were just sitting in traffic that all of a sudden just, you know, people had to get out and, and run for their lives from it. What I don't understand is, I can't, I've been to New Orleans since, I can't understand how, like, how much of the area was affected because I always hear. Yeah, Bourbon Street like, in that area really was not affected very, yeah. was very little. So the Ninth Ward, which is all, if you're facing the Gulf, is all down to the left. Sure. And that area, which is lower, I mean, what is it, Highway 10, which is an, uh, above ground. Yeah. So I, that was all, which is what gave us access to certain areas, but, it, but the on ramps and off ramps would all just go to water. And that's actually where they were all, you know, eventually when, when law enforcement and, and rescuers came, that's how they, they put their boats in the water, is on the on-ramps and off-ramps. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, but New Orleans proper, for the most part, most of it was, was not affected, was not in water. In fact, I got drunk on Bourbon Street, uh, you know, a couple times. Really? <laughs> yeah, there was a bar that stayed open. For locals, nothing there. They had no ice or anything. Everything was warm. But, wow. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and so you you had a, you kicked back a little bit after. Oh a long yeah, day. yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, there was a night that we got so shit faced. We're wandering out. You know, and again, there's no lights anywhere. You know, people have candles and whatnot. And all of a sudden, I see National Guardsmen creeping up, locked and loaded, creeping up the sides of the street, going from doorway to doorway. And we're sitting there going, what the, what the hell are you guys doing? You know, and they're like, get out of here. It's like. No, we're not getting out of here. It's like, you guys need to have a drink and relax. Do you think that the National Guardsmen did a good job when they got not there? Not what I saw. Nope. Really? Nope. Not Why? what I saw. I mean, eventually, listen, I'm not going to say, again, I don't want to, you know, guy, the first group I saw coming in, their CEO had these guys locked and loaded, cocked and ready to go. And now these are Americans, you know, these are, these are fellow Americans. And they had, they were rolling in with weapons 
ready, hot and ready to go. W and were they, the people disorderly at this point? No, well, no. People were, were pretty much out of their minds as far as out of, you know, not in the sense of out of their minds as far as crazy. Just yeah. lethargic and, and, you know, we're talking about people that have been living out in the street I, with no food, I, like very little food and water. I mean, living like animals, literally living like animals. That's what I would imagine. That I think I've been to New Orleans in the summer. It is excruciatingly hot. Incredibly hot. So I, I would imagine yeah. that people without food, really without clean drinking water, yep. uh, just for dirty, days, afraid, you know. Yeah, would be worn to the bone. Yeah. They wouldn't be like. And these guys rolled up and they literally would rolled up and just in their face, get up. Move, God, you know, screaming at them. And Where are they going to move? Yeah, and these people were just in, in, in such a daze of uh, not even able to function anymore. You wow. know, and, and a photographer, and a fellow photographer, and I actually went to the CO and we're like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. I was like, these people need your help. They don't need to be, you know, this isn't an, arm, an armed warfare that you're going into. These people just need help. Right. And, you know, and, and he just started yelling at us and we told him to go fuck himself and, you know. And that was it? That was it. And he, he stood down? They just, they, oh, they just kept doing what they were doing. Really? Yeah. They didn't stop. He didn't say, wow, maybe this guy's nope. right. Nope. Nope. No, it, it, it was makes really, no you know, sense to me. This whole again, thing makes no sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it was really disgusting as far as Look, the behavior of, of I mean, the, the, a lot of the behavior you saw of people there as far as the strong yeah. that were taking from the weak. Um, um, but then also as far as law enforcement that was coming in from other parts of the country. Yeah. And, you know, this was now what, you know, four years after 9-11. Right. So now you got all these cops coming in who their wives, or they, you know, bought all the best tactical gear that you sure. could find in a magazine. And these guys came in decked out, looking, you know, ready for combat. But there's you no know? combat. No, there's no, no, no. These also, you know, these is law enforcement. These are, this is a military. Right. You know, but they're decked out in their full tactical gear that they couldn't wait to get on. You know, hoping that they can go, you know, punch a terrorist in the face. You know, but these are Americans. Yep. Yep. Who who have been hurt by? Okay. And let's, I, fa yeah, let's you know. Let's take a look well, at no, but to real to finish yeah. the story that relates to that, I, I was standing up on the roadway and, and it was a, a a point where a lot of law enforcement were showing up and meeting, you know, and figure out what, what they're going to do. And I'm standing next to these two guys, decked out in complete tactical gear. You know, I mean, they look like they're SWAT, but they're like from shithole little town. Yeah. And one goes to the other. Hey man, you know how long you been here? He's like, oh, I got here yesterday. He's like, you know, have you have you have a chance to shoot anybody yet? He's like, no, no, I haven't had a chance. But man, I really want to get, I want to shoot some motherfucker, man. I can't wait to get the chance. And I just, I looked at the guys, and I, I was like, man, I wish I had a tape recorder to fucking. That, that's you awful. I, I told yeah. you told me this story before we went on air, and yeah. I, I'm blown away by yeah, it. That's no joke, man. Hundred percent. I, I I would think. I probably would think you're you're embellishing that story a little nope. if I didn't know you. Nope. Number one, yeah, and I know you, and I know that you're not. And number two, it, it illustrates, by the way, how bad this got. But number two, I told you I was in Indianapolis and had a horrific situation with a police officer that I wish, as a journalist, I had been able to capture, where uh, they had almost the same mentality, nothing like this situation just on a Saturday night before a football game, before they opened Lucas Oil, which is the new stadium in Indianapolis. Yep. It's now uh, five to seven, eight years old. But I was there the night before opening night, and this officer was and uh, look, not only looking for problems, uh, looking to create problems and, and made other officers stand down as people were being beaten and stuff. Um, and so there, you know, it's hard to believe that there is this mentality, but it, it does exist. and. I guess sometimes these situations bring out the worst in in people, and that's terrible. Um, I don't, I don't even I don't know what to say to that. I mean, I just think I don't you, know either. What, I mean, at yeah. that point, I mean, I've been there already for you know over a week, and I mean, I'm tired. I was covered, in, you know, we we all were getting this sort of weird rash because yeah. the water, you know, um, yeah. I mean, you try to stay out of the water, but just sure. uh, you know, just when you're dirty for so long in such a dirty environment, but it, it just you know, I just put my head down. I just walked away. I was like, I. Just don't even know what to say or do about that. Yeah, uh, you know, I was like, God, I just hope these guys, you know, I they don't get the chance. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I just we need awful. to get you a GoPro or yeah. something. Yeah. So, well, I mean, you're going to be documenting some stuff out in the field for us too when you're out yep, there. Yep, that's what and, we're talking about. Com coming in via Skype to the uh, yep. to the show. Yep. Hopefully, showing positive things that go on. Well, whatever. And, and no, but I mean, what and I'm you know, saying I is, mean, that people need to, see, you know, I'll tell you, you know, I. Everybody always goes on like, oh, everybody, everything in the news is bad. It's like, unfortunately, it's one that's what sells no, newspapers. No, no, I, but 
Um, there's a lot of bad shit going on. Well, no, and people I, need to know about. I it. think I think that people do need to know about it, and I think they need to know about the truth because uh, obviously we're ten years later and we're just finding out some of these things now because, uh, well, I would say quite honestly because no news organization would give you an opportunity to talk about it yeah. or a reporter to talk yeah. honestly. No, and about again, it. I mean, I remember seeing when I got back and they kept. Uh, you know, politicians, you know, locally kept going up like, oh, you know, these reports never happen. That stuff never happens. Like, what are you kidding? Yeah. I mean, come on, man. How so, can you say that? Well, that's why I it's mean, important. That's terrible. So we believe in, in telling positive stories, and, 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 but we have to tell the truth. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. And so what I'm saying is that I hope that the next time you're out there and you, you come in via Skype or something, that um, you have positive stories to report, not that that's what's going to happen, but I'm saying, and you did tell me some stories of other places you've been where people band together and help each other, yeah. which is a positive story. Yeah, which know? we can get into. We'll yeah. show some photos, but we'll and, get into anyways, it. The so difference between America and other places in the world where these type of similar same situations have happened and the difference on how Americans treat each other versus... Why are we country. such savages? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a long... It's a good question. Yeah, it's very close. Right. So let's show let's, some of them. We'll, we'll, we'll work some our photos. way towards some of that. Sounds good. <laughs> Uh, so this is, what is this? I don't even know. All right, so this, again, you have a lot of the roadways. You have, you know, I mean, you got a lot of bridges. You'll have a lot of canals. So this is obviously, I'm shooting from a raised ro roadway. So it's a long lens shot. Um, you got a, a military helicopter in the background that's, that's doing a rescue. And then the smoke in the very far background, if I recall, was actually, I think it was a paint factory that was near the safe house that we were in that exploded the night that we arrived. Wow. And we actually thought we were, it was mortar shells as far as, I mean, because the drums were igniting and shooting up in the air. And um, so that, that burned, I don't know how many days that that was on fire. Wow. And, and, and but the, that's performing a rescue, that helicopter. That's um, I mean, I, you know, I think it was, it was hovering right above. So, you know, we, you know, we, we, We'd like to we, think we move was. around. I'd like right. to think that it was. Um, and, and so you can't, I mean, this is, you can't get any further. This bridge has collapsed. I would imagine. No, 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 no. That's just again. It, that's the the roadway. Oh, the, road. the road, so the roadway it, goes down and up. So that's that's so a that's a raised roadway going right. over a canal. I got you now. And but that so but the, yeah. But what you see, that's that's you know you see there's a sign down there. I mean that's all roads. Right. Down below and under the water. Wow. There. Wow. That's intense. That's intense. Uh, it, and what do you do when you see that? You don't. I mean, you're just like I take a picture. Take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> No, I know, you take so, a, no, you know. no, but you take a picture and go, shit, man, I hope this makes, you know, gets out there. You know, right. I mean, every, there's a lot of people down there doing work, but you know, you know, when you capture stuff that like, man, I really hope that editors put this in the paper because people need to see this. I just feel like for some reason, maybe we're 10 years later, we've got Twitter and we've got Periscope and we've got Facebook and we've got all this stuff that unfortunately, I feel like 10 years ago, maybe as the media, we didn't do a good enough job covering it. We certainly... I think I think here's the problem. I don't know. I actually think things were covered better back then than now, to be honest with you. But, but I don't think we covered Katrina well. Because I, I think... I mean, again, I was there, so I wasn't seeing yeah. the coverage. So know, this so is what I, I have to I say know, about the coverage. I think that the coverage of Katrina lacked, and I'll tell you where it lacked, is I don't think we showed the despair of the people and, 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 and how bad it was. We didn't talk about the stories. There were... We basically, as media, we said, okay... This person says they've been raped or that there's reports of being raped. Then we had this politician come on and say, nope, no rapes here. Okay, no rapes. Yeah. And, and then I think also we didn't show the images like you have for the most part, or we said this is a small area. Um, there are some images we're going to get to that I think really show how bad it was. And, and those images definitely and it was bad. I mean, so, I, I can't remember. It was, yeah. I mean, the photographs don't do it. It was yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was just, uh, you know, I mean, it was 1,500 died, which is, uh, you know, and uh, I mean, again, people were told to evacuate, and a lot of people that, you know, didn't evacuate couldn't. You know, yeah. you, you know you're talking about, you know, folks that didn't have the money or didn't have vehicles, you know, couldn't leave. Um, but the amount of time to, to get services down in is what is, That's to the me, thing that blows my mind. Do you think we're people, better prepared? People died from, from exposure and from being trapped in houses, not from the water and drowning as much. I mean, do, it, do you think that we're better prepared today, I hope? Oh, I, I would say yes, that we're absolutely better prepared. I think, um, you know, I, I mean, talking about as far as New York, like with Sandy and whatnot, I mean, uh, you know, the response, uh, yes, I think we're definitely better prepared. But again, you had, there was access. So this, right. it wasn't about being prepared, as far as I'm concerned. This is about government level decisions being made on what do we do. Right. You know, that was, 
to me because there was access. We got in. I right. got in. Sure. You know, just a couple days later, I drove. I drove all the way in. Right. So you know, they could have brought buses in. They could have brought ambulances in. They could have brought a, 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 every service in that imaginable. They could have brought in. Did you ever get stuck? Nope. Never. Nope. Never even close to stuck. No. That's amazing. Uh, I'm looking in the Slack chat to see if anybody else has comments. I think they're all blown away the terrifics uh, by this. Uh, let's show another picture and then we'll take a quick break. Where nobody's watching. That is not <laughs> true. I know that's for a fact. They get quiet when they're amazed. This is a bunch of houses. So, again, now this is, I'm up on uh, Highway 10, which is a raised, so this is shooting down from the highway. Because um, that's how we moved around, but it, it only went so far until that went into the water. Um, but, uh, you know, you try to get down into, onto boats as well. But, uh, so this was up from above. And this, you know, I don't remember the timeline as far as the days. I mean, it's 10 years ago. But this was probably maybe five days in after the levees broke. Five days and it still looks like that. Oh, the, oh, the, water, did, the water did not, did not recede. Uh, I mean, it, it was not dropping. It was very little. And, and you see how the car, on the very far right of the screen, there is a car in, and you can see you, that really shows you how high the water is. The water is over the windows. Oh, I mean, the, some of the areas the water was was up to second stories. Wow. Yeah. And it, was, it was very very high. Wow. And and did you ever get in a boat? Did you ever rent a boat? Uh, no. Uh, well, a couple times we actually I found a rowboat and I found a piece of wood and it was a really rigging, <laughs> which was really stupid because I'm in like ten thousand dollars worth of camera gear. Yeah. And you know and, and I found a piece of siding to use a. Now the water was just, it just filled with gasoline and oh. oil, and I mean, you do not want to get into this water. So I tell the reporter to get in, and he starts crying. <laughs> Again? <laughs> he starts crying, he's like, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. I'm like, and we started rowing out, and I was like, I actually turned around, I'm like, this is really stupid, because the thing was yeah. really. <laughs> and now, but, but we got, I got into other Did you later. survive with this guy, or did you have to send him home? No, 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 I mean, there was times, I mean, he, he broke down a few times. Like, I was photographing a, a body, and, and you know, he just, he was like, I, he just, went into tears again and I, I actually walked him out, put him in the car and I said, listen, you know, just put the radio on or something, put yeah. something to, to take your mind off it. You ever talked to this guy since? No. Yeah. I don't even remember his name. Yeah. Well, that's probably a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't want to he say did, that he, on didn't, he didn't stay long at the post. He didn't last really? much longer. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know where he went, but uh, I mean, that was the only time I ever worked with him and he disappeared after Probably that. back to entertainment reporting. Probably. Yeah. All right, uh, Matt McDermott has been nice enough to come in and talk uh, uh, some stories about Katrina to show us what really happened, what he photographed on the ground. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with a whole lot more. Obviously, this is very serious, but it's important for you guys to see because we have to make sure that stuff like this doesn't happen again. That's part of what Matt does is he goes and he documents the worst tragedies. He gets the despair on people's faces. He gets the stuff that nobody else is willing to get. And he shows it to us so that we can, you know, realize not only now but in future generations what went on and how we can prevent it from happening again. You know, Matt would tell you probably, and we'll talk about that, that unfortunately sometimes history repeats itself, but I would hope that uh, we can learn from this kind of thing. It, it seems very much like this was a video game, but it was real life uh, as we get into more of these photos. So we'll be back with a whole lot more on Be Terrific right after this. <laughs> Rode microphones are the official microphones of Be Terrific. Find out more at RodeMic.com. Welcome back to the Michael Artsis Show. I'm Michael Artsis. You're the Terrifics. Thanks so much for watching. Today we take a little bit of a somber note here on Be Terrific. We're looking back at Katrina 10 years later. A lot of people lost their lives. A lot of people's lives were changed forever. It was a terrible tragedy in the United States, in Louisiana, in the uh, New Orleans area. I think that as we're learning today by having Matt McDermott, our good friend and photographer in studio, he goes into these catastrophes as everybody else is trying to flee and get out to document what's going on and he's telling us uh, showing us some photos and telling us what he remembers from 10 years ago and I think that uh, we're, we're learning a lot that was never aired on news and unfortunately we're learning a lot about things that uh, were just, just straight wrong you know and I think that that's important to talk about so we're talking about it uh, I don't think maybe we'll get to something Matt but I don't think anything so far has had a positive ring um, 
uh, uh, Paul Dixon, who's watching from the UK in our uh, Slack chat, mm -hmm. he wanted to know if you think that, and I don't know if you've been to the UK or you know how the people are there, but uh, we talked kind of on, on how how kind of savage everybody was at this point. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that the people in the UK would have reacted the same way? You've been around the world a lot in different uh, disasters, <coughs> and you said that we kind of handled ourselves not as good as other places, where they, where they really banded together and helped each other. Um, do you think that that would happen in the UK? Um, you know, areas that I think are of, of my belief, this is my opinion as far as areas that are that are more of, of a singular either religion mm -hmm. or belief will bond together overall as far as when you're in a place like the UK where you know or America where there's multiple religions multiple beliefs there's a lot more friction underneath the surface that exists every day and when it when something happens that's you know catastrophe that puts people in that position of whether I may not survive if I don't get this instead of working together with others it goes into this one-on-one -on -one mentality of I need what I need from me and my family, and really to hell with everybody else. Um, it's kind for example, of, well, yeah. go ahead. No, I'm just going to say it's kind of a sad state. Um, I mean, I th what I do, I think, in the UK would probably happen similarly. Yes, I do. I mean, we're, you know, it's a similar capitalistic uh, environment. and But that's part of what capitalism is. It makes, it's part of what makes us so great. It drives us, on the other hand, uh, in, a, in a situation like this, we need not to have capitalism. Or the idea of it. Yeah, but we're people that all believe that we're all individual snowflakes of beauty and wonder that need that we're more important than everybody else. Yeah. And the fact of it is, we're not. I mean, right. We're all really, you know, mustard fart in the wind. I mean, you know, seriously, if I die tomorrow, my, my folks and my wife will be upset. But outside of that, who gives a shit? I might be upset. Nah, well, because you won't be able to have me on and tell cool stories. But, <laughs> but seriously, you <laughs> know, I mean, this 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 overindulging self worth. Yeah. Um, does lead to that kind of behavior. You know, you're not looking towards the group, you're looking towards the self. Now, now what about, I mean, uh, this area was predominantly people who were lower income, poor people. Well, I, I mean, New Orleans and Louisiana is, you know, has a lot of low income, a lot, you know. Uh, but the people who were affected But the, the people most. that, you know, yeah, were, were generally very low income because a lot of people didn't have a way to get out. So they don't have, they don't have a, uh, who am I, I, you know, I'm. But you still have people in, that are down there that Trying it, to it goes into the strongest survive. Right. And it goes into a very predatory mentality. Um, you know, and, and people, I tell you, you know, and Americans, we are, can become very savage. Uh -huh. my, you know, my belief as far as what I've seen in the world and what I've seen here is, especially America, we're no more than three, four days away from total chaos as far as if we go into a, a real serious catastrophe where all municipalities, law enforcement, everything is gone. Yeah. You know, there's no electricity, there's no law enforcement. The first one or two the first night first two nights is a party yeah. everybody's you know it's a big because it's a new adventure you know everybody's gonna be drunk a party by the third fourth night it's gonna be looting and killing and everything that's very scary that's yes, a very it scary it's thought very scary. because it's not i don't know that it's that hard to get there with a natural disaster like we've no, seen no it's not you know once people get into the mindset of fear and survival um as far you know with and i would tell as far as america but uh you know, it, it's what that I believe it would what would happen in New York. It's like back when we had the blackout. Yeah. Okay. Now that went what three nights? It was three nights that that went three yeah. days. If that went for a week, you know, and I mean, you still had law enforcement, but, but still, you know, you go you go for a week of that, there would have been you would have been scraping bodies. Off I the will walls. tell you, I I was uh, I was covering that blackout, and it was scary. Yeah. And it. On but night, remember the first I mean, two nights? It was a party. I mean, well, it was, it was. I mean, people get it, drunk and party. It was a, a lot great more time. of a party, but there were some areas where it was straight up scary. Yeah. Uh, now give it, give it another, give it another two, three nights. And that's how I know when I talk about like, well, Matt, you're a big, strong guy, but there are ten people coming at you at one time. What are you going to do? Uh, that's how I know about that yeah. because of things like this. And and the blackout was very nerve wracking in those kinds of situations. You look and you're doing a, a report and you're with your camera person, and you start looking around and there are 10 people around you, 15 people around you now, 20 people around you, and you're like, wow, how do we get out of this? Yeah, 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 and that's the thing we were talking about as far as New you know, Orleans, you're going traveling down with these vehicles full of stuff. I yeah. mean, you gotta realize where where you are, what you have, and reading the, the tempo and the, the energy of the environment right. that's going on, but uh, things can change real quick. Do you have a plan of like, if something like this were to happen here again, where you would go? Like, let's say it happened in New York, where you You know would what, go? you know, and this is, you know, all these shows about these, these people that are, you know, they're, they're stocking Doomsday up, preppers. Doomsday and yeah. all that kind of stuff. You know what, that's all crap too. 
Yeah. You know why? Because you know what? If things got really that bad, you're going to get somebody like me is going to come bang on you. You know, say we're, we're now months into it and it is what it is. You've got to kill the to survive. Someone like me is going to come kick your door in and I'm going to take your shit. <laughs> yeah. Now you're savage. Well, no, I'm saying, but you go, I mean, these people that are prepping for six months, for two years, yeah. you know, man, this shit's just not realistic. No, 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 but I don't know? even mean that. I just mean like, uh, okay. I, I just, okay, if, if this is going to happen okay, but for a do week, I, I'm going to get away from it. I mean, listen, I drive a f big lifted four-wheel drive Jeep, but, yeah. you know, can you get out of the city? No, no, because, yeah. you know, if something happens, I mean, there's only so many routes out of the city. Right. I mean, the traffic is going to bind everything up. I mean, the, really, the best way you're going to get out is to get a boat. Right. You know, go, go by water. That's a good plan. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to keep that up here. All right, let's take a, a look at some of these photos. Some of them are pretty graphic, so don't, uh, if, if you're going to get an uneasy stomach, I think now is about a good time to... Either uh, cover your screen and listen. You know or what? For every, what everybody sees in movies now, I don't think people get that. Do our, see, the, Greg and I were talking yeah, about this. Uh, you know, I mean, we're so that's another thing. We're so des desensitized, you know, which goes to also all the shootings nowadays. I mean, you know, the shooting of the journalists. I mean, you know, that moves people for what six hours now, and it's like, eh, you know. Well, hold on. So I'm going to ask Greg to join the conversation after telling him, "Don't worry, you won't be used today, Greg." Uh, <laughs> I, uh, don't worry, just switch today. I, I actually want Greg, Greg and I were talking about this, he plays a lot of video games, mm -hmm. and we were talking about, um, you know, so I went on Facebook right after the reporter was shot and the camera person was shot last week, and there were a lot of really heinous things written about her uh, and, that I saw on Facebook, and I don't go on Facebook much, and I was really repulsed. But even in that, it's like, it's like, is it so necessary? I mean, I, listen, everybody, there's so many angry people. Yeah. It's like, man, dude, that's the problem with Facebook. And again, everybody thinking that they, you right. know, I need to, my words need to be out in the world. Everybody needs to hear what I have to hear. The problem is most people should not be heard. Right. I'm sorry. I, no, I, I agree. You know, you want to go stand on your soapbox in your bathroom and look in the mirror and knock yourself out. You know, I, but I, I mean, you're spewing all this crap. I and mean, even if it's true or not. Well, like, it, it also makes everybody, it, it, ang it keeps the machine going. It Absolutely. makes everybody more it's angry like, and it fuels the thing. Everybody and there was no reason for it. It, it. it repulsed me. <laughs> it really repulsed me. I, I like, I, I had to get off Facebook immediately. But yeah. one of the comments. It's ugly. It's ugly. It really is. One of the, and, and I think you're right. Everybody has to weigh in. They have to have a comment. They have to be snarky. And, and so one of the things, though, that I noticed was that somebody said uh, that if this were, how come it's okay? They weren't showing her getting actually shot on television. Like they had the footage, but they weren't showing it. And they were showing like moments before and as the guy's waving the gun and all that, but they mm -hmm. cut out right as she gets shot. And the comment was a black kid gets uh, shot in, by a cop in the back um, and they show this all day long and a white girl gets shot on television and they don't. And I think this is the reason why in my mind, first of all, I think nobody being shot on television should ever be shown in, like somebody legitimately being killed. Not I'm not talking about a movie or law and order. I'm talking about uh, as a news program, unless it happens live on television, you can't prevent it. it we should not show it. Uh, the reason why the kids who are being shot in the back are being shown is because that's the whole case, whether the cop acted correctly or not acted correctly, number one. Number two, you don't see their faces because their backs are turned and they're far away and it's dash cam video. Think about this. What if you didn't, what if they didn't show that? Do you know how pissed off people would be if you didn't show well, it? They, they, then they'd say, Oh, well, now they're, 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 they're hiding they're, it. They're hiding it. They're covering it up. Exactly. You can't, you can't win either way. So, There's no winning. No, either. and that's what I was getting to is that's the whole case. That's what the case hinges on. Yeah. That is what the idea is. Was the cop being racist, using brute force, using brutality, whatever, or was the cop not? That's, it's all right there. This is something where the girl was shot up close personally. You're seeing her reaction and everything else, and that's why I think they weren't showing it and shouldn't have shown well, I mean, all the newspapers ran it. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, watching videos is different than, than looking at stuff but, but here's but, uh, but here's my thing. I, I really don't think it should have been shown. And, and so Greg watched the whole thing, and I watched the whole thing. I was horrified by it. it and it's he, not necessary because you know, you know the outcome. You know right. what happens. I mean, to actually, you know, see her, the, it's just not necessary. But Greg had said that he he didn't understand I mean, why. He looked like a first-game shooter. Right. He know? said he didn't have any emotion to it. And I said yeah. that's because you're desensitized. And I know it's crazy to say it. I'm not blaming it on video games, but movies, video games, we, and, 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 and as angry as we are as people, we are desensitized to it. And by the way, it's not us. It's not happening to me or my family. To me, I was horrified. Uh, but I think we're desensitized. You brought that up. What did you cry for? I didn't cry. Yeah, me neither. But hold on a second. I didn't cry. Which is, you know, I mean, I mean it's, I mean, because you, you, you actually you hear about people say, oh my God, I, I cried. And you're like, really? You didn't know the person. Why'd you cry? But then you start thinking to yourself, oh, shit. Wow. 
I, did, I, did I really feel that much either? I'm but I didn't <laughs> cry, but I actually felt for her and her family. Yeah. I, I really no, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but for how long? I mean, we're all, it's, we're all just oversaturated with everything nowadays. Yeah. You know, and again, I mean, it, it's, you know, the news jumps all over for what, you know, a day, two days, you know, until the next salacious thing happens, and then they jump on that and you forget about it. I mean, uh, you know, I, I think we're, we're just, we're at a period right now between technology and human development as far as we just got to ride this out. I, I, don't, I don't think there's any answer to, to any of this at the moment. You know, I mean, I, I think we're all overindulged. Uh, we're over hyper, we're over sexed. Uh, you know, I mean, people can't have sex one on one now that, you know, they, they, they got to have uh, two people and a dog and a, and a fucking pineapple, <laughs> you know, because they're watching porn all day long. Yeah. Um, I mean, you do get desensitized to all this, inter this, this visual that's pumping into you. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, where are we going to go with it? I, you know, again, I think we're at a point where just gonna, you know, it's like riding it out and see Aren't what these challenges, you said hi before history repeats itself, we don't learn anything. I think uh, in a positive way almost, uh, history repeats itself and, and it, it kind of like levels itself out. So right now we're kind of like in this weird spot. Yeah, but yeah, 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 no, I agree. I mean, you know, you go through swings as far as, right. you know, we're, we're, we're too liberal and too loose, and that will eventually swing back, and, and you know, conservatism will come back in. Well, then we can, then we'll become too conservative. Right. And it, it, the pendulum swings back and forth with right. everything. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, there's a yin and It'd just and be yang nice to have, like, a, a happy medium. Uh, and, I mean... Yeah, but then you'd have nothing to talk about. I'd have nothing to photograph. Well, we, we, we still have, <laughs> I mean, we are, we still have you know, plenty I mean, to talk we're, about. We're still animals. I mean, you know, yeah, we're human beings. Oh, yeah. we're, we're enlightened and all this horse crap and bullshit whatnot. Bullshit, we're animals. You're not going to a yoga ranch? You're Fuck not going to do a Berkham uh, yoga? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, until we make a giant leap as far as enlightenment, uh, you know, we are violent beings. You yeah. know, and, and uh, you know, we still kill and want to kill. You should be on, we, like, we, Axemen or something. We, we know, but we still enjoy, you know, people, why, why, does, why does traffic always slow down for an accident? People are curious. Why do people watch the Indy 500? You know, it's not about the not about who wins. They want to see a massive uh, car wreck. Yeah. yeah, and then they want to say how terrible it is that yeah. the guy died. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. this should be banned and blah blah blah, and everybody jump on the soapboxes right. again. It's, that's that's the <laughs> nutty part is that everybody watches for that. There's no doubt about that. They watch for the big crash, and then you have the big crash, and it's oh, this is a terrible sport. We got to get rid of it now because it's too dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I mean, I'm, I'm a part of it, too. I mean, I'm, I'm going down covering this stuff to show the people and show the world. But you're, no, no, no. You I, know, no, but I mean, you know, I'm part of it, too. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, I can't say that I'm any better or, or worse, uh, uh, you know, in the situation. But that's different. You're going down I there mean, to I mean, I like doing it because it, it's very it's, important. It's also stuff that I can handle and I can do, and a lot of people can't. Yeah. You know, and I'm a journal junkie. So yeah. there's a self-satisfaction. Is it cathartic it. a little bit that you can share this with people? It helps you heal when you're, I mm -hmm. mean, because this is. Because I don't feel, I mean. You don't feel anything. Ever. No, 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 no. It's not that I don't feel yeah. anything, but uh, you know, do I feel? Do I need to heal from it? No. Yeah. You know, I mean, this people do horrible things to each other. Nasty things happen. You know, environment changes You're, drastically. I mean, it, it's you know, it's a tough world. It's, it's a tough place. You know what I like about you is you're unfiltered. You're really uncensored. So we get the real story. It's September. Which is, is going to bite me in the ass at some point. Someone's going to. No, I mean, going to look me up and be on my doorstep waiting for me tonight. No, you haven't said anything wrong. You're telling what happened, what you observed, you know, and and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, but but I, I think that what's interesting is that that you don't seem you don't you weren't scared there at all. No, ever. Even when you got out of the car when this guy's surrounded, you no. you don't know which way that's going. Mm -mm. No, I, you know, and it, it, it's, it, would, it probably comes off arrogant saying that I'm not the biggest badass in the world at all. There's plenty of people that kick my ass. Yeah. Um, but I do know I'm good on my feet. Um, I am good in situations as far as how to handle it. And I'm, so far, I've been able to survive is there, every is, situation that I've gone into. And I will say a few times I get out of it going, wow, that was really stupid, and I got lucky. It, it, with, the, with this reporter who was, di didn't follow your instructions, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you get out of the car. If that thing goes sideways, are you trying to talk the people down, or do you know that there's look, there's you know no what? It, talking anybody down? It, uh, yeah, it all depends. On, you know, th th you got to read it quickly. Right. Um, I mean, I'm good at talking people down and talking out of situations, yeah. but then also there is a time where you know you you know it's not going to be talked down, and I believe as far as uh, you know at that point, sort of being quiet and carry a big fucking stick. Yeah. You know, and if you got to crack someone in the head, you got to crack them in the head. Let's look at some more pictures. I hear that for sure. I don't know if Greg's got another picture for us. He should. We, should. we have plenty. Okay, so this is. Uh, All right, thank so you, we Greg. saw. Yeah, we saw this one. So let's push forward. Uh, that, this right. is 
So I mean, it, so this is the raised highway that, that we're traveling along, and um, this actually this this poor guy, uh, he was there was a wheelchair. I mean, oh. if you can look at the, the state of his legs, so he obviously he was wheelchair bound and probably tried to go as far as he could go on his own in a wheelchair along the upper raised highway and hit a point and couldn't go any further. Wow. And I mean, it seems and like he just you know, and, and again, and you start when you're traveling this 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 race high because you can only go so far because eventually sure. goes, does go to water. But this is how we start because that's New Orleans in the background. Right. So that's about it. We're about as far as we can go. But you know, I mean, day in and day out, traveling back and forth, seeing what's changing and getting you know, and he was there the whole time I was there. He was, he was just sitting there on the side of the road. And, and and I don't. He didn't make it, did he? No, 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 no. I mean, he's he was dead. As far as you yeah. see, you see what's happening. As far as the, the, the what happens, what, I was saying, the scent, what happens the in the heat belly. with with, yeah. with yeah, is, is it, the the air it begins to to expand yeah. and usually blows out the side as far oh, as okay. and and innards and the liquid and gas eventually finds a spot, a weak spot in the side that pops, you know, and pops a hole and start leaking and oozing. Thank you, doctor. Yes. That's and it's, uh, and it's very slippery stuff to step in. I, I could imagine. Uh, so that I probably shouldn't say. That was probably over the top. But yes, it's very slim. It's like axle grease. Why is that over the top? Well, I'm just, I don't want to gross people out. <laughs> no, there's a one. His belly's going to expand until no, it no, pops but a the hole. Walk, but walking in human blood and yeah. guts, uh, you know, it's very, very slippery. Yeah. Well, that, now people know. That's now honest. people know, yeah. Now they're desensitized <laughs> yeah, Now they're desensitized. Uh, exactly. Now you are adding to the yeah. uh, <laughs> but, but seriously, you know, I see this and I feel, I actually feel sad when I see this. And I wonder. I mean, you, know, you think about this poor guy was by, could, obviously was by himself. Yeah. But there was nobody who could help him. That's what I'm, yeah, that's no, what I'm thinking. No. Nobody who could have helped him before he got to this point. We couldn't have banded together. I mean, when I'm walking in a building and I see somebody who can't help themselves into a building, I hold the door for them. I mean, I hold the door for... Well, you know, that's why I think, I mean, of the true hero, I mean, think of firefighters. I mean, you know, firefighters are just running into buildings. You know, I mean, yeah. that's their job, and it, but that's, that's heroics. You know, I mean, uh, listen, I'm friends with cops, and cops are absolute heroes too, but there, there is an authoritative... There are a lot of cops that become police officers because of having that power and authority. Sure. Firefighters, no power and authority in the sense that, you know, you're, you're just... You're, purposely just going in to save people but it, that you don't know. I think that's what blows my mind the most, though, about Katrina, is that nobody helped this guy. There were so many people that they didn't band together. Again, it was, you know, you do have to remember about Katrina. I mean, when the levees broke, it, the water just rushed in. I mean, yeah. people just panicked, you know, and people got left behind. Wow. All right, let's go to you the know, next You know, that does happen. I mean, you know, you talk about banding together, and yeah, people should need to band together. But there's also does hit a point where, you know, it's, it's a battlefield triage where you just like, hey, man, you know, this person can't keep up. Either we all die or he dies. We got to go. No, that I get too. I understand. You, you know, I just don't understand. I don't. I don't know. Maybe I didn't think it was that bad. Maybe it is that bad. I, I just. Bad. It was bad, man. It was but really this guy's bad. on top of a bridge, so somebody got that far. Yeah. So yeah. No, somebody got that far. But again, so this right. obviously this so is this is another self-explanatory. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's get past. You know, and this what this is. You know, I mean, who knows how? I mean, the bodies. There were bodies floating. Yeah. So, and obviously the water was starting to, to lessen here and he was starting to, to hit ground. Um, so, you know, who knows how the demise first started, but. Yeah, that's sad. What, let's go back to that one before. Uh, I mean, this is like New Orleans. That's like the city, right? Yeah, actually, if you go back of the gentleman pulling the boat, that was actually down in the area of the famous cemeteries. Yeah, yeah this one. Uh, on the left and right end is some of the, the famous up, up above ground cemeteries sure. uh, right in that area. What happened to all that? Uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the cemeteries actually the, the crypts you know the above ground uh, opened up and, and bodies you know wow the they castles started floating started float, floating up floating out and whatnot. Wow, that's sad too. Uh, I never understand why we bury people at all. Like. I well, don't it's, know. A, it's another day. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm just. <laughs> no, here. Do, what do you want? Do you want to be cremated? I don't know. I have no idea. I, that seems a little drastic to me. On the other hand, like uh, we bury, I, I'm we, a germaphobe. I don't want to be We bury people bugs. for the living, so they have a place to go to. Right. I know, know that to, to go stand above and. Right. Yeah. Cool. You're a germaphobe. Then. Yeah. <laughs> now you want to be cremated. <laughs> right. I yeah. don't want to. You don't want to sit there rot. Get to me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. On the other hand, like that seems very like hot. I don't know that I want to go through that <laughs> process. Right on. Um, so then, uh, this yeah, is this is. I mean, this is this is part of New Orleans, the city on the edge. That you know, there, there were spots, but like Bour Bourbon Street wasn't underwater. Um, you know, the 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 quarter really was. You know, a little bit water here and there, but uh, you know, there are parts of the city that were underwater. 
this being obvious. I don't remember where exactly in the city this was, but uh, you know, those are obviously high rises. Yeah, it, it's so weird because it looks. Uh, but that, that's a main thoroughfare, obviously. Yeah. As far as yeah, it looks like it kind of looks natural, like it. it yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like something out of like you know Florida or somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, and, that, and that the would, palm tree. That's a very main main thoroughfare through that area. All right, let's let's go to the next picture. This is actually when I was on a rescue boat um, and, you know, going through and, and as we'll, we'll show you a the, the couple further, but uh, starting, starting to try to pick people up. And, and were, how many people could they put on a rescue boat? Um, they, you know, they had all sorts of different types. They actually, what they started bringing in was down there, they have these um, amphibious vehicles that are, are tourist things sure. that they're actually very big. Like the duck boat. Yeah, yeah. duck boats. They started sure. bringing those in. You know, that we, that's, you can bring a lot of people in and out. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, yeah. And and I don't know why they didn't do that in the beginning. So where were these people living for days? This was a school, I think, if I recall. I think this was a school. Oh, and they were just sort of like on the roof of the school. I see well, I mean, it, the, you know, the, the school was probably three, three or four stories. So okay, they, you so know, they you'd, you'd like be like second story, third story. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But again, I mean, people were were just, uh, you know, it. it the violence, the, the looting, um, you know, there's shots later on, we'll show you as far as what it looks, but, uh, you know, people would, we were banding together in groups for, for mm -hmm. safety and, and, and really for safety, you know, but just for pure survival. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's good that they were banding together, at least for safety. That's, I mean, look how high that street sign has got to be, and they're floating past it. Yep. That's insane. And those are, are people going to rescue people, I imagine. Yep. Well, how many people can you rescue in a boat that size? Yep. One, two. <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of odd choices of things, you know, I mean, uh, but again, also people are just going out to see, you know, to find, they're starting to mark on houses as far as which ones are cleared, um, okay. you know, and that kind of thing. So. Wow. All right. Let's move on. Again, I mean, great mode of transportation, but. Yeah, the airboats, the airboats were, were, a lot of airboats were coming in. The problem with the airboats is when they fire up, you know, the water was so nasty, right. and when they, when the, yeah, when they fire up the their fans, uh, and uh, it just, it would hose everybody behind them. Awful, awful. So and again, and we started, everybody started developing rashes on their skin. Wow. I, I there's that guy again. Yeah, there's, yeah. Um, I just hope we never see anything like this in our lifetimes again. Uh, unfortunately, I'm sure we will at some point. Most likely. There's a, uh, I, I, so what is that? So somebody... Yeah, this is this is along, again along the upper highway. The you know the actually the uh, the dome was it the Superdome? Yeah, yeah Superdome. Superdome, yeah. right? Yeah, is actually right in the background. Um, and um, you know again, I mean, man, that uh, is as far as it got. Wow. And, and and then I mean, you think he was trying to make it to the Superdome? No, I you know when we did some photos further ahead, uh, there were people living up on the raised highway because they they're they're which were out in the open, I mean, the, yeah. the heat during the day, but the, they were living up there because um, they were, one, they were raised off the ground. And again, people didn't know if more water was coming, you know, sure. I mean, um, but you also had a raised point as far as, you know, as you can sort of see, and they, they were sort of hoping vehicles would come eventually. And these people lived up on these highways for a week, week and a half. Just hoping. Yep, just, you know, with nowhere to go. We really, as a, as a country, did, I don't think did enough. But I think it's I also we because... No, we didn't do enough at all. I mean, but again, I think it's because, because we didn't know. No, I'm telling you, I think that the media, we knew, we didn't know it was that they, bad. Like they knew, they knew. I mean, we, listen, I, you know, if I, if I can on my own, you yeah. know, just rent a car in Baton Rouge and drive in... No, but I'm saying the media didn't do enough to get this well, out there. Okay, well, all right, but, all right, but maybe, you know, whether media didn't do enough or didn't do enough, where, where are the government officials? Where, why aren't they rolling in? I, I can't answer that. I asked you that uh, off camera. Yeah, I don't. You after know. seeing some of these photos, I mean, I if, know. you know, I mean, if I'm just some guy that could just show up, rent a car, load yeah. it up with supplies, and roll in, you know. Well, that's why I say I'm hoping that. Where, where's what are our elected officials doing that are you know, and people that are making astronomical amounts of money off of uh, frankly doing nothing, and this is where we. Well, have. that's what I'm saying. I hope that we learn from this. Yeah, well, we'll because we really screwed up there. Our politicians. Oh, it's really disgusting. Up. Yeah. Yeah, it was disgusting. I mean, uh, you know, if we go ahead as far as this, sure. the photo of the girl, this. Okay, so here's these people. They're living. This is the one that got me the most. Yeah. Look at the little so baby. This, and this is where they're living. This this is a, the highway. See the exit sign? There's the yeah. super, Superdome over to the right. This is where they've been living. Okay. And so I, you know, I think I photographed these these folks in just in the first day, couple of days when I was there. And, you know, we, every now and then, you know, when we, I mean, we'd pass by them all the time, you know, we'd, we'd 
what supplies we could because you know I actually we looted a yeah. couple grocery stores ourselves as far as we needed supplies but we, we would give them supplies but about a week and a half in and, and you looted because there was nobody there to pay yeah it, there's, I'll show you you know there's there's stores were just you know grocery stores were I you mean, need it was, food. It, it was it was literally like out of The Walking Dead, yeah. as far as you just go in and find a couple cans of something that you can use. You're like, okay, no, but you didn't take as much as you could carry. You take no, no, no. If we needed, you know, just just for us so to keep, that that we could keep going, and we brought, you know, we got extra stuff, and we, we'd give to people that we saw. Sure. But so about a week and a half in, uh, there's I run into this, these these local ambulance guys. I mean, they're a mess, and you can tell they've been working nonstop. They obviously stayed, you know, and they're. I'm like, you know, I saw the talking guy, and I was like, God, you know, these, these folks have been up here, you know, finally you guys stopped. He's like, honestly, he's like, FEMA told us to leave these people. Wait, what? Yeah. To FEMA, leave these people? Yep, to leave them. Just leave them where they are. FEMA told, and, and the ambulance driver said, I told FEMA to go fuck themselves. He's like, I, you know, I'm not leaving these people anymore. And they were going, they just went off on their own and started take, getting people and trying to bring them somewhere. Wow. But FEMA said, don't, just leave them up there. And I was like, you got, that, that's right on, man. I mean, I can't believe that there's, that we couldn't have done something. Now again, I'm over, I'm reporting to you what I experienced, you know. So I'm going on what he told right, me. Right, of course. You know, I mean, maybe FEMA didn't tell you. I'm just going on what the what, right, of course, what this ambulance driver told but, me. But why? But in the moment, I got to tell you, you know, you got to believe him because I mean, he's pouring oh. sweat, covered in dirt, and his anger on his face as far as. But I don't understand. And I, I I believe, but I'm just saying I don't understand what uh, why I, why we can't take some of what I heard. You know that there was a lot of political power playing on who's in charge, and that's. One of the stories I heard as far as how things fell apart so badly as far as on reaction, because a lot of different agencies were, you know, who's in charge, we're in charge, no, fuck you, we're in charge, and things wasn't, wasn't getting done. That's, That's what I've heard, but, I, you know, again, I'm going on what I heard. I do not know for a fact. That is unreal. All right, uh, let's take a look at, at some more stuff. What's that? All right, so this is actually one of those duck boats. So these are, okay. we're going along, and, and these are people that are being rescued out of They're homes. happy. Yeah, yeah. Finally, we see kid. some yeah, happy. Here's the hap this is probably the happiest photo you're going to see. Um, one of the, a photo that I did not put in, um, but if, if when I move, going from that look, just turning right, there are all these people and they have all their nose covered. And what it is, is in a lot of these homes, there's bodies in the homes yeah. that are rotting. So it smells. So we're, as we're going along, actually a lot of the, 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 the riders, people were throwing up over the sides because the stench was so bad of rotting, rotting corpses wow. in, in these homes. And literally, you know, as you go by, I mean, you can, you can just, it's, it's this overwhelming smell of, you know, you go a few houses and it goes away, then all of a sudden, boom. And you just, it's a uh, very, very powerful smell. Do, do you, uh, CJ wanted to know in our Slack chat if uh, there was some, what was the most positive thing or if there was something positive or, or a kind act of humanity that you saw? Uh, I guess maybe the guy standing up to FEMA and saying, no, I'm not leaving. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of them. That's one of them, yeah. I mean, I got to tell you, I didn't see a lot. I mean, I will tell you a freaking shitty story is when uh, I got a call from, from my... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got to go back to wait, shitty. Wait, I'm sorry. hold on. No, no, no. CJS yeah, for uh, Act well, of Humanity. Uh, how, about, how, about, how about patheticness of Sean Penn walking down Bourbon Street carrying a shotgun, being having having his film crew filming him? Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. Sean, so yeah, we got a report that Sean Penn was walking down Bourbon Street with a fucking shotgun and walking yeah. around the, you know and had a film crew and then he got a Do, boat what was the point he was making a movie He's a fucking asshole because you know and then he got a boat and he was making rescues but but filming the whole, whole thing of him rescuing it's like it's just, it's just disgusting yeah it's you know absolute. a lot of the a lot of the nfl players were helping out down there that no was, no no i mean there were people the that were coming down legitimately helping but yeah you know, but no but, no that's like, not legitimately helping no. that's legitimately profiteering yeah 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 um you know i mean again especially you know when we were there for like a week week and a half and you yeah. see these people coming down playing these kind of games and doing this kind of behavior. It's just like, man, you know, and you're, you're, you know, and I'm not a local. I, I wasn't affected the way these people were at all, right? But I've, you know, been there. I'm dirty. I'm tired. I'm covered in a rash. And you, you're starting, you know, your emotions started getting raw. Right. As far as seeing all these clean folk coming in and acting like assholes. Right. You know, and it's really just, it's disgusting behavior. Yeah. I mean. But to, to go to uh, active chair. And I'll have to think about that. All right, charity. all right. CJ, <laughs> CJ wants to know. Uh, it, but was, I got to tell you, I saw, I saw a lot of really bad behavior. That's yeah. what I saw is a lot of bad behavior. Really? Yep. Yep. There has uh, to be some. Not a lot. I did not well, see. Well, like I said, the guy standing up to FEMA and saying, "No, I'm not uh, going to forget about yeah. these people." That's um, pretty bold. Yeah. No. It. Uh, it was really sad. I mean, I got to tell you, it was. You know, when I got back home after, I took a long hot shower, and I was like, 
I felt tired. Yeah. I definitely felt tired after that one. It was just mostly drained. Like, man, it was just ugly. Yeah, especially because it was in America. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and do we have any more photos? Oh, yeah. No, there's... This is, uh, mili no, military started coming. Oh, all right, some of the best. Oh, again, though, 82nd Airborne, yeah. these guys just came back from a tour. Mm -hmm. Those guys rocked, you know? I mean, again, they were absolutely just going door to door helping people. They were pulling people out, and they were just, they were fantastic. All the water that they had, they were giving out, that wow. they had no more water. They were themselves. just happy to help Americans. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they were just, literally just had gotten back tour from the Middle East, and, and they were so thrilled to be in America, helping Americans. You know what's crazy about this photograph? If you told me you took that in Africa, I might believe it. Yeah. But you took that in Louisiana. Yep, yep. I mean, again, that's the raised highways where, where landing strips now for helicopters and whatnot. Wow. Wow. All right. And that's, uh, they're trying to save somebody? Yep. Uh, yeah, now this is the beginning, you know, now they're, you know, helicopters are starting to come in. So, I mean, because um, they first started bringing in helicopters landing up on Route 10 as far as trying to get some, some rescue people, people that, uh, you know, obviously need serious medical attention. So when they said that you couldn't get to people or you couldn't get, you, you absolutely could have gotten, I mean, you're photographing them, so they could have gotten to them yeah. to help them get out. Yeah. Yep. Even if they needed medical attention. Yeah. Yeah, again, you know, you could drive, I mean, to, I mean, there was a lot of places, obviously, that you'd have to get to by boat, but you could still bring vehicles into New Orleans. You could have brought a, a, a thousand buses in and just bus, and people, bus out. people out. And you could have sent them different places, Florida. You know, I mean, all the people in the, stuck in the Superdome, they could have all been bussed out. Right. I mean, girls are being raped and people are being killed inside the Superdome. I mean, living like animals. Right. Um, there was another area that was down by a, um, an old folks' home. You know, that's probably not the PC way to call it, but whatever. Retirement and all the, home. Retirement home. And all these, they were all out on the sidewalk in wheelchairs. And because they couldn't be indoors, it was too hot. There were people that were supposed to be on dialysis uh, once a day. They hadn't been on dialysis machines for oh. a week and a half. They, people were literally just dying, and they were picking them up, moving the, and moving the bodies, and putting them in the back room. And, but, they, were just, I mean, and look, they just were sitting in their wheelchairs, just sitting there out all day long. Well, you couldn't have bust them to and, uh, Florida, and, South Carolina, course, yeah, no, they could have. Texas. They absolutely could have, and it didn't happen. You know, I mean, they, uh, what people, you know, talk about living like animals, what people are trying to make do. The sewers, the sewer grates, as far as they, they set up, um, they took out of some of the casinos, the, these railings with cloth. And that's the toilet, so people would be shitting in the sewer grates, you know, but, uh, you know, as far as trying to make some kind of bathroom and whatnot. Sure. I mean, people were, you know, making do as best they could, but, I mean, it's really, I mean, the, we, people were forced to live like animals. Wow. You know, and... and that's uh, a Yui, right? Again, up on, uh, up on the raised uh, highway. I mean, that's an that's a old chopper, boy. Yeah. Uh, well, they saved the best for America. <laughs> they <laughs> okay, so here's... here's here, here's what I was just talking about as far as some of these people in the back. Or, but people were just sitting, waiting. I mean, this is what they did all day long, sitting in these groups. And again, because these people, in, you know, down here, the, these are very they, vulnerable people. These were weak, uh, older people. So, you know, staying in these large groups for safety. And, and they just sat waiting for days, days, week. Were they scared? Yes. Oh, it was, it was awful. It was absolutely awful. And there was, it's, it feels like I mean, such you a know, helpless we were, situation. I mean, we started, I mean, we were photographing and we, then we, you know, we started, you know, trying to do what we could do. I mean, we actually sure. ran into a family that was heading into a gang area because in, in some of the areas, gangs had fortified themselves in different ho hotels and were going out and looting sure. and robbing. And, and uh, we found this, this family that was, was trying to get, had to go through that area and, and we, you know, we, we got put them on the vehicles and, and, you know, we called, I got another friend who had another car, we got them over and we got them through. It was like, because if they went through there, they probably wouldn't, who knows what happened. They had right, a couple of, of young girls. Oh my God. Um, it, you know, again, I wish I could come up with more, you know, happy, you know. No, uh, I, I want to come up with how we make sure that this never happens again anywhere in the United States of America, certainly. I, you know, frankly, I mean, look at, look at the level of violence that's going on now. I mean, you know, can you imagine if something like this happened again now as far as the level of violence? No, it would I be mean, awful. Now, I mean, now think about the racial violence. Yeah, you it, know, would, the, it would the, be terrible. The amount, of, the amount of anger and hatred that we have bubbling under the surface as far as for each other, especially ethnicity-wise. I mean, if, you know, when, if people had full reign to do yeah. whatever they wanted to do, their hearts desired that you would never get caught, what do you think would happen? Oh, it would be awful. I mean, you know, there's no awful. repercussion whatsoever for any behavior. It would be awful. It scares me. I don't even want to think about it, let alone talk about it. And I, I think that we, you know, it's, it's the one thing that makes me, that I, I have no intention ever of running for office. It's the one thing that makes me say I'd want to run for office to bring about change because I believe that that's really the only thing you can do is 
is you go and talk to your politicians or you elect the right people or become a politician yourself. It's not what I want to do. It's the only thing that makes me say, the only way to prevent this from happening again is, is to be an elected official, but then you sit there and you go, well, who's going to have the, the, the power to yeah, do anything? Yeah, exactly. And then what, what do you, oh, so you get Well, I'm going to be some, then, some then, little then, local. Then, yeah, uh, then, what, then what are you going to do? Right. Uh, you know, but, but sitting back and saying, well, there's nothing you can do at all, so fuck it, that doesn't work either. Right, so what do, so you, what, do, what do you do, though? It I makes me what say, do do? what do you do? But how do we prevent this? It just, I guess what you I mean, do I believe, is you I believe create, it's sort of like casting a stone into the water as far as the ripple effect. I, get, I guess what you do is you create be terrific. And you and you try to put out positive content you do as, as much, much as, as you can in your little area. Yeah. You know, I mean, even when you get caught off on the highway and some guy's being a fucking asshole, you don't respond back or you don't take it out on the next person. Well, that's going to be a hard one for me. Yeah, I know. Me too. But, <laughs> but no, but the ripple effect. I absolutely yeah. believe in the ripple effect as far as, you know, something bad happens to you. Then that gets passed on to somebody sure. else and it, and it ripples out. So that's why I say so, you start be terrific and then we spread good, positive Work, work small and just, yeah. you know. Try to be the best person you can in your small area, and just hope that that energy. Positive and you get the terrifics. Out. We get a, we've got a whole army of positive thinkers, the terrifics out there. We do. They're great, great people. We, and and you know they're led by the sheriff, Digital Phil, in in the Slack chat. And we've got uh, a great. You know, we just need the terrifics to. I, I say them all the time. Look, we're doing great stuff, uh, and and I want you to tap your neighbor on the shoulder or the guy sitting next to you in the cubicle, or your family, and say, Hey, you got to watch, be terrific, because. We've shown that there, the world wants and needs positive content, so let's keep doing that, and maybe that helps change people. And, and like I said, I mean, I'm not gonna not, we're not going to not show something like this. We're not going to not bring you on. We, we, we want to talk about truth, the reality, and, and we want to do that so that it doesn't happen again. Yeah. But what's going to dominate our stuff is positive. Absolutely, content. absolutely. No, but I mean, this, this kind of stuff, I mean, people need to know. Yeah. You know, I mean, even, well, I, even I'm it's 10 years you, later, I, but I, th I mean, in many ways, I think we're, we're, we're at a, a more violent point now, at least a, a more honest violent point now than right. we were 10 years ago. You know, I mean, I think all the same hatred has been there. For, for a very long time. Yeah. You know, but now I think it's, it's a little more vocal. And That's the thing that, there, that kills me is I never, ever, ever look at race. I really don't. I never look at skin color or race, and there are so many people, but I think... Yeah, you can't say that. You can't say ever. Everybody sees, sees race and color as far as, uh, you know, it's just to what, to what degree you see it. I mean, come on, we're visual people. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I mean, I'm, what not, you say, but I'm you not, know, I'm yeah. not, you're right. I'm not blind that I can see that somebody has a different skin color than me, but I don't judge them on that. That's what I'm saying. No, I, I hear really I don't. hear what you're saying. You know, but but everybody's got it in them. Um, you know, unfortunately, it's it just. I mean, it has become more honest, which I think is a good thing. No, I think, it, that I think, is. I think it's, I think it needs to be more honest as yeah. far as how people feel. So then, actually, maybe something can start being done about it. Yeah. You know, and people realize like, oh, well, I actually do have an issue here. We definitely you know? have an issue. There's yeah. no doubt. About and that's that. become more vocal, and more much more clear. And I and I agree that it's better that we're we seem to be more honest than we ever have been about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's because more, you can't deal with but, it if you're yeah, not no, again, but you see the level of violence as far as, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's like a catch-22, man. I mean, it's like, it just, it, it's cyclical. It just, it just keeps rolling yeah. bigger and bigger. This, this giant mass ball that's just getting bigger and bigger. Do you, think, do you think that maybe part of it is that we feel like we have to be politically correct all the time and that... Uh, well, the whole political correction, I mean, that's all new, though. That's, I mean... The, no, I'm that's, saying, but do you think that that's part of the reason why... I don't think it's helping. Because people dance around all these issues. Yeah, I mean, I think the political correctness is actually a lot of bullshit. Yeah. Because deep down, people still think what they think. Right. But now they're just, you know, trying to watch their P's and Q's. Right. Which I think is a bunch of horseshit as right. well. I mean, I'd rather have somebody being honest on how they feel. When you, when you think about Katrina 10 years later, you, you look at these photos, you think back. What do you, what do you think about when you, you, know, you saw all the coverage over the weekend? Do you look back and go, wow, that was awful? I mean, what do you think? All right, this is going to sound awful to say, but I look back on, man, I fucking kicked ass. I was there. But that's as a working journalist of being somewhere and kicking ass and making a difference, getting work out there that meant something. Right. Now, as a human being, looking back going, holy shit, I, I was there, man. Wow, that was nasty. That yeah. was hard, nasty stuff. And you, Would you, you know, feel I for you the feel, people? I feel for the, yeah, and you feel for the people. I feel for the families that lost people. Um, I mean, a lot of those people, you don't know where they are today no. that you photograph. Do you, do you wonder? Do you go, wow, I hope they're doing all right. I, I wonder if they survived. Uh, yeah, I mean, yes and no. It's weird as far as, you know, that's going to sound kind of callous and cold. But, I mean, I photograph thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And, and I mean, again, you sort of have to dis disconnect and d detach when you're doing that kind of work. You know, again, what we've talked about, the, the camera becomes a bit of a buffer. Sure. Okay. 
um, you know, I'm very proud of doing the work, um, and I hope that it, it in some way helped somehow, somewhere, yeah. is what you hope, is that it, it did some good. Well, you know, I think that, that, that whether, whether as far as showing, you know, brought in money, as far as donations, something. I, I think that as, as far as uh, showing it off, at least here, we're, we're, we're helping, hopefully, to, to show that the next time that there's a situation. You know, here's the problem. A situation like that happens in Louisiana, and, and I sit here with probably everybody else who's here. Yes, in the New York like Northerners area. will say, oh, well, we'd never behave that way. Those are, you know. No, 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 no. Those are, that's that's those are not what I'm saying. Southern people. We, we sit, no, 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 no. That's not how, <laughs> I think we sit. <laughs> I think we sit here and we go, oh, well, that's too bad that happened in Louisiana. Well, all right. Uh, what's for dinner tonight? Um, and, and uh, or what's on Beach Road? Well, sort of some of what I just said as well. Yeah. And it makes me say that. down there. It's not us. It, it makes me us. say that, wow, no matter what I'm doing in life, the next time something like that happens, it's kind of my obligation. I almost feel, you know what I feel like? I feel like it's my obligation that I got to put everything up uh, together and I got to drive down there and just help people next time it happens. And I would hope that if that happens like Sandy happened here, people drive up. And I will tell you that we did a lot better in Sandy. We had people from all over yep. coming up to help us yep. and all across the country. And I think that, that realistically that we should uh, be, that's the lines we should be thinking about. Yes, we have to think about our safety and whatever, but you're right. All we think about is, well, good thing that wasn't my family. All right, I uh, hope they're okay and, and what's next? And I think that that's really the lines we should be thinking about is along the lines we should be thinking is how can I help? What can I do to make a difference? Even if that means maybe I'm not making a buck this week. Um, I need to go and help. And I would hope that, I hope that that's my reaction the next time. I or hope even at least, you know, I mean, sometimes, you know, having too many, too many people, me. but I mean, donating to, you know, and, and pick a good cause. You know, you know where the money's sure. going to a good place, not in someone's pocket, but, you know, I mean, donate. You know, donating food, donating money, you know, yeah. donating supplies. Because I sit here the whole time, and that's what I think. I think, wow, I wish I had gone down with you and helped out or, or documented in some way. Excuse me. Yeah, and sometimes actually more, the more people coming in and showing up actually becomes more of a problem because now you have these people that need to be taken care of as well that show up. You know, but it is often, you know what I'm saying? But there's like, no, so that's the thing. There's no coordinated effort. Like, why isn't there... Uh, there, we have a million apps. We have an app called Tinder. You know what Tinder is? Yeah, again, we, we covered this in last time. I'm not a tech <laughs> I think the last time I was on Facebook was about six months ago. Tinder is an app that will get you <laughs> that will get you hooked up with a girl who wants to sleep oh, with you yeah, in, yeah, in yeah, four yeah, and a half that. minutes. Okay. okay, we can figure that out. Yep. But we can't figure out how to put an app together. Well, well because that's satisfying our personal needs. Oh, okay. That's what's more important. But why don't we put an app together? <laughs> that's the problem. Satisfying but the why person. Can't our carnal needs are so needed to I be was a, satisfied. I, see, and I was about to go on a, a, a terrific rant that you, you, you won't let me go on. <laughs> I, I, why can't we put an app together <laughs> where we could actually say, okay, well, we don't need a million people to come and help out in Louisiana. We need uh, you, a uh, thousand people. You have something you can contribute. Okay, and this is what we need you to do. Bang, 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 bang. You people, how about you send some resources or you, you, you hang out for a little while. And then you people over here, like, do you think you have a place we could send these people to, like a, a, a warehouse? Not that a we bad idea, though. You just came up with a, a tech thing that could possibly help as far as... But, but like, you see what I'm saying? Like, so why, why wouldn't there be... Okay, so let's say you could find a warehouse, like, that's empty in Texas, and we could start bringing people to them. If somebody else has got cots, we could bring the cots there. Then somebody else's, uh, they, could, they could police it. They, they, you know, they've got the, the militia. Okay, the militia is waiting for something to do. Make sure that nobody gets raped in this warehouse and all that stuff. Keep order. You know what I'm saying? Like we could organize this whole thing, get the people out of Louisiana, and, and all this stuff. That's see now we're making progress. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Let me know how it works. I don't, know, I don't know how to make an app. <laughs> it's hard. It's such a hard thing. I mean, you see this stuff and it's the suffering and. It's just, you know, it really, it's, it's tough to have any answers nowadays. It really is very difficult. I mean, uh, you know, every, again, uh, Tinder, like you just brought up, yeah. I mean, the amount of time spent on developing devices and, and apps for sell our, our indulgence yeah. and our carnal behavior versus, you know. Helping uh, humanity. What, I, mean, what, I mean, is it that, do, do you need all this shit? Is it that important? No. And I mean, Christ, I mean, you don't have enough you know, porn to look at, and there's not enough people, you know, have sex with it. Now you'd be able to drive around and the thing, what, dings? When they, what, is it's that pretty, what it is? I, I don't know exactly. I've only been told. Oh, yeah. I, uh, but <laughs> We're both married. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but the way, the way I understand it is that, uh, is that you go on and you set a proximity, 
and it says it shows you a so picture. So somebody that wants to have sex, it probably if you it dings if if gives you a, a it, hey, I'm available. Well, no, no, no. This is what it does. I don't even want to know. It gives a shit. It's fucking horrible. It, but you're you're pretty close. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking. It, it gives you pictures of people in the vicinity that you've set. You could set twenty five. Why is what, what is it now? One out of three people have herpes. And yeah, there you go. Yeah, I don't know. Is that <laughs> is that it? I don't know. So then uh, you swipe left if you don't like the way the person looks, and right if you do. And if they swipe the same for you, then your connection, and you can do whatever. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. That's from what I understand. Actually, th there was a guy I was in an airport with, and our flight was delayed, and he got on Tinder to see if anybody in the airport wanted to do this. And there were no women in the airport that wanted to. And I said to him, you know, you should switch that to you're looking for a man. And he said, what do you mean? I, that's not the way I, I go. And I said, well, I think men are the only ones that would seek out just men in general. We're like a wire just, differently. Just, just We'd be like, oh, a flight delay? Stranger, what? stranger sex in the bathroom. Right. Like, I'm on a flight delay. What could I do? And the whole airport was basically shut down. And he's like, no, 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 no. I don't want it to think that I'm gay. And I said, okay, do it. Just do it. I'm, I'm the only one here that's going to be able to make oh, fun right, of you. And I'm not going to say, I, I'm telling you to do it, so I'm not going to say. So he goes, okay. And he puts it on men. <sighs> thing blows up. No shit. I swear. <laughs> Big surprise. Right I'm on. like, see, I told you. Right, and that's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then he quickly puts it back to women. It's like, it's like a guy right behind him going, ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> but I mean, yes, exactly. So anyway, that um, my point is, though, we should take our, like we can we can do one of two things. We can use our powers for evil or for good. We've got this great technology, all these great powers. And I think I really believe that today, if Katrina were to happen today between Twitter and Facebook and all these things, we would get to the people who need the help the most. I hope. But yeah, I hope so too. I, I mean, I agree. Yes, I mean that, that there's there's more communication yeah. nowadays. But it, but it still requires on a, you know, even local level, on a government level, as far as coordinating all this kind of stuff. And yeah. I understand you're saying coordinating through through social media, but it's, you, you're still talking about a lot of people that don't know what they're doing. They want to go right. help, but you still need people that know what they're doing, because there's you know you need to have a game plan going into these kind of things. You can't just like show no, up. No, of and course. Say, you know, the one thing so, that was lacking you know, which is where you need local. Uh, coordination and advisement well, and And leadership. the one thing that was lacking was a leader. Yeah. And, need and leadership. even on the ground, they had that Ray Nagy. You remember him? Mm -hmm. We all thought, at least here, so you were there. We thought from the coverage, this guy was the greatest. I mean, I, we, we would have said he could run for president after that. Everybody watched this. And this guy turns out to be as corrupt as the next guy. Yeah. And, and is in yeah, jail. New Orleans was always, was, you know, his... You know, and again, I, I'm not going to speak out of turn, but uh, New Orleans has always been known for its level of corruption, almost where the, you know New York was years ago. Yeah, a lot of corruption. Um, you know, and uh, you know what scares me? It's just me. a shame as far as that local leadership, because um, that's where it needs to start first is local leadership. Yeah. You know, going to the government saying this is what we need. We need help. You know, and that obviously something got skipped, something yeah. got missed, and a lot of people suffered. Uh, Needlessly. Well, hopefully it never happens again. Thank you for sharing the images, uh, for for showing us that uh, stuff, and for kind of recounting your experience. I know that that's an experience that nobody's ever heard before. I'm serious. Nobody's ever heard that really, because you know what happens is, I think a lot of times, the people who have complained and, and been loud have been victims, and the victims, you know what happens is people go, ah, they're just whining, they're victims, you know, or they're just, you know, trying to get attention for themselves. That's the general consensus. I don't think enough people have paid enough attention. But when you have somebody who's... No, I'm giving you an objective view. Exactly. You're an objective view. Yeah. You've been all around the world with this stuff. And you say, no, it really was probably worse than these people were telling you uh, who were there, who were complaining. And, and I think that that's really important. You know, so uh, thank you. I, I can't thank you enough for coming in. No, thank you for having me. Um, it's been fantastic. It, it oh, no, it's been terrific. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and I hope that, uh, I know that we, we've set you up now with Skype on your computer. Yep, yep, we were talking about as far as, uh, you know, uh, it's obviously something overseas, you know, next thing I go to is Sure, as, you know, but, but I mean, but it could be domestic as well, hopefully not, hopefully there will be no domestic yeah. issues. Yeah, but we'll do something. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll get sort of, you know, in the moment, uh, you know, on scene. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that would be nice so that we know the real story. It's, that's the thing is, you know, I think so many times, even today, you know, the thing with like the talking heads, you get this guy, has got this agenda, that guy's got that agenda, and, and then they just have, let them have an argument, and even if it's about New Orleans, right? And we don't get to what is actually going on, and then you get these reporters who, I don't know, I'm not gonna bash reporters, but I guess I'm gonna bash reporters by saying that they don't actually 
really show you what's going on for the most part. They well, fit it into a two minute package or they- Do you remember a lot of, you know, yeah. A lot of reporters on the ground are doing the job. It's some, it's editors are making uh, decisions. So you also do have to remember that as far as, you know, because a lot of the reporters often get bashed who are on the ground doing the work. Yeah. You know, and they're the, they're the face that's out there, you know, gathering information. I don't know, man. I've been on the other side of that. And you pretty much get to tell your story when you're there. The problem is you have to fit it into a short gap. No, no. A lot of stuff gets filtered. Yeah. You know, no, no, I know it, it gets does. Really filtered, if not completely, you know, chucked aside and tossed in the trash. Well, and it depends where you're working. Luckily, I've never worked at a place. Well, I have. I've worked at a place, but I've just ignored them. Where they tell me, <laughs> you know, you, you can't tell this, and I go, okay, well, pff, all right, uh, I'll ask for forgiveness instead of, you know. Yeah, forgiveness instead of permission. Right, exactly. <laughs> like it's just if that's what's happening, that's what's happening. You yeah. know, you you have to show it. And I'm a, a firm believer. So I really appreciate you coming in here and being honest and telling us and telling us stuff that, uh, quite frankly, I don't think 10 years later anybody has really heard uh, other than, yeah, it's been mishandled. Okay. Great. What does yeah. that mean and to what level? Yeah. You know, to actually see it makes an impact. Yeah. Well, again, thanks for having me. Yeah. I really appreciate it, Mike. Thank you. Anytime. Um, you know, and, and so we'll take a quick break uh, and we'll come back with the Michael Arts Show right after this on Be Terrific. Rode microphones are the official microphones of Be Terrific. Find out more at RodeMike.com. Hey. Welcome back to the Michael Arts Show. I'm Michael Arts. You're the Terrifics. You make Be Terrific special. Thanks so much for joining us. I got Matt McDermott in studio. Matt McDermott. It, wait, it's McDermottPhotos.com. Yes, sir. First of all. Yep. And people can go see all your work. We were talking a lot about Katrina. Uh, you told us very honestly about what you saw and observed there 10 years ago, uh, which I appreciate. I appreciate very much. I think sometimes on Be Terrific, even though we like to show positive stuff, we have to talk about real issues and honesty, and, and that was awesome. Um, I've got the Slack chat open, so you can join the Slack chat, beterrific.com slash Slack. Send us your name, your email address, and you can join us and the rest of the Terrifics 24-hour conversation. When we're on air, we'll see your questions and comments on air. Of course, at Be Terrific TV on all social media. Um, JT Hockey wants to know, you see a lot of things. You mm -hmm. do a lot of things. What are some of the more fun things you've done? Obviously, this was, Katrina was not. What is something fun that you've done? Fun, fun. What's what's the term of fun? Um, well, I guess let's start with what have you enjoyed doing? Well, I mean, I enjoy doing all of it. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the thing as far as I do get. It will sound kind of crazy, but you know, all these these nasty environments and and death and whatnot. I mean, I do enjoy doing it as far as. The Why do you enjoy it? Because I can do it. I, you know, whatever psyche I had, you know, whatever, however my development as a child, I have the ability to go into these things. One, physically, I can physically endure yeah. it. Um, I mean, I've gone into areas where, you know, you really, you know, don't eat for, for, you know, maybe one power bar a day for five days. You know, you're not, uh, you know, you're living in, in filth and, and um, you know, I'm very physically durable. Mm -hmm. But mentally, I've always been able to handle it as far as, you know, I don't dream about it. Um, you know, I probably have some sort of PTSD that I don't realize that someday is going to wear its ugly head. But frankly, um, you know, I, I have the ability of sort of going in and sort of, you know. You compartmentalizing? I don't know if I'd call it that. It's just, I think it's it's just a way of, of again, I, I've always viewed the world in a more sociological way of like bad things happen and you know, the, the like when the human body rots, it stinks, it's ugly. But it's not it's it's nothing to shy away from. It's just part of life. It's part of life. So yeah. but is there been something you've walked away from and been like, that's pretty cool? Like uh, for instance, um, Well, like all right, you know, I mean it's like stuff that's sort of interesting. I mean, I'm actually doing right now working on a story with Curtis Lewa and the and the Guardian Angels. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, it's 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 due to the fact that the city's crime is going up and the Guardian Angels are scary com coming that's back. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's not necessarily fun. But I'm just, you know, going out and going on their patrols with them from one to se uh, seven to one at night and walking around with them and see what happens. But just following the guys around and, um, you know, it's not like it's a party, obviously. But you know, I, I enjoy, you know, documenting as far as what so, these, what you know, these people are, you know, these are people that aren't getting paid. 
you know, they're doing this on their own free time. They, they have regular jobs and families, but they are going out trying to make their neighborhood safer. So, so the Guardian Angels were an organization that in the 60s, 70s, and 80s? Uh, no, really the, 80s. 80s. Really uh, only they're, they're, the 80s? I mean, the, I think it was just the 80s. Crossley was started in the 80s, and I mean, they were on the New York cover, uh, was it the New York, New York Magazine of New Yorker in 1985? Yeah. They were on the cover, and they did a big spread. Um, but it was, I think it was, they really started in the 80s. Okay. You know, it was Curtis Lewa, who was obviously a, yeah. a New York icon. Of sure, and uh, he's a radio host. Yeah, and he's now 61, and he's got brought him back out, and they're out patrolling. So I guess that uh, the feeling was uh, that uh, Giuliani had cleaned up the city, and Bloomberg had followed, yep. and that they were, there wasn't a need for these guys anymore, so they kind of, I guess... Yeah, I mean, they, they've always still... No, they, I mean, they, they actually, the, they have... What do you, God, what do you say? What was it like? They have like 5,000 all around the, uh, the country and the world. I mean, they have like they have Guardian Angels in Philadelphia. They have them in other cities. Um, but their need in, in New York hasn't been what it was compared to the 80s and early 90s. Right. Um, you know, the, the city really did clean up. Um, and now they're needed again. And now, you know, they're, they're coming back out, That's which says a lot as far as because de Blas, Mayor de Blasio claims that crime's not going up. But you talk to, you know, you go into these areas and these streets. Well, that's I mean, probably because Mayor de Blasio that, isn't waking up. Yeah, well, it's a good way to put it. But, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty awful stuff. What was it, remember that weekend about a month ago, a month and a half, where there was 19 people shot? Yeah. 19. I know. In New York City shot. It's, it's, it's awful. Um, so these, the Guardian Angels are doing good, good work. You've seen it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're going out and, you know, and they're patrolling. And they, they patrol in, like, groups of 10. Um, they're not allowed to, obviously, to, you know, I mean, they're able to defend themselves. Um, so they go into a situation and it's, you know, they tell people to stop and get out of here. And if they fight, you know, then, then they'll defend themselves. Um, and then they do citizen's arrests, you know, and they're wow. calling, calling the NYPD to come get them. Wow. But, it, but it's going in showing a presence as far as, uh, you know, to stop robberies, rapes, muggings. Have you seen it? Like, have you seen them stop crimes? Unfortunately, uh, it hasn't happened on one of my patrols yet, so I'm hoping uh, this Thursday night something goes down. <laughs> because in all my coverage that I'm putting, a photo right. story I'm putting together of them, that's a piece that I'm missing. <laughs> it's right. some actual hand-to-hand -hand, uh, situation. Well, you'll have to Skype in about that. So we'll, we'll see happens. what happens, yeah. 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 And, and, but it's good that there's, there's been nothing so far. Yeah. But as far as, I mean, fun, it's, you know, you understand, I, I mean, I... Well, have you ever been, like, in an F-16 or something? Where oh, you I mean, I've been in, yeah, no, I've been in, God, I, I forget more than what I've, you know, a lot of what I've done. Um, I mean, I've been with, what, four different presidents. I've been uh, to the, Jesus, tops of the towers. I've been crocodile hunters uh, yeah. out in Australia. Yeah, we talked uh, about that last night. Yeah, that must yeah. have been pretty oh, cool. That, that, was a, that was a blast. I mean, I love being in helicopters, but going going on a helicopter, you know, six hours, five hours out into the outback of northern Australia. I remember that skid right on yeah, your chest, Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was with the actual crocodile Dundee guy that the, yeah. the guy from the movies was. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it, it's I've done incredible you know, getting paid to go to places and do things that... Does uh, Jess ever tell you to slow down? Jess's wife. No, she loves it. Yeah. Because I get... I start, if I don't She's go, awesome. Hi, Jess. Yeah. Way. Hey, baby. If I don't do something, you know, sort of out there and adventuresome, I, I start getting itchy and... You know, and, and I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta do something. You know, <laughs> you <could laughs> like, go I gotta like, go somewhere, man. I need, I gotta. Uh, you need so. to, like, you could climb a tree in the backyard or something. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe not. No, but it's like, but you you know, but it's also the need to create. Right. You know, it's to, to to be a part of something, to to get out there and to and to create and. You know, hopefully, whether it's making a difference or even if it's for entertainment purposes, sure, purposes, like, you know, like, like crocodile hunters or something yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, it, if if I don't go somewhere for for a month or so, it, it starts getting. I start getting a little, you know, I'll be at the bar and I'm like fucking drinking Jack Daniels. I'm like, fuck, man. Wow, really? It's like, <laughs> it's like that? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I, start, I just start getting itchy. I mean, wow, you need a hobby. <laughs> I ride, um, motor ride motorcycles very fast. Uh, ben, <laughs> that's, I don't know, maybe. Okay, Ben Raithig, ben Raithig wants to know, um, along those lines, what's your favorite show or, or project like that that you've worked on, like Crocodile Hunters? Or you went with those guys on the border, right? Those uh, police officers. Uh, the, yeah, I mean, DEA U.S. Marshals. I've done U.S. Marshals. I did uh, um, police force down in El Paso, which is uh, in this town, I'm literally right on the border. So they're, they're yeah. Doing, what was that? That was for Al Roker's production company that was doing um, it for A and E, right? Uh, oh God, is that like border remember. cops or something? God, yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> You're gonna put me on the spot. I, I guess that it, I got, guess, it got canceled. <laughs> it wasn't very popular. Uh, uh, ben, <laughs> ben, I guess that wasn't his favorite just, project. Just put me on. No, but I had a great time doing yeah. it. Um, I did a whole big thing with all the, these daredevils. It was a first show for Andy. Um, yes, American, the American, American daredevils. daredevils. And about, with all these nuts, you know, you ever think crazy of folk, man. Putting yourself in the cannon? 
Yeah, see, no, see that, see that to me, you're just asking to get hurt. I don't, I'm not, I'm not looking to do anything where I'm asking to get hurt as far except as for driving a motorcycle fast. Yeah, but but you think you're not gonna, you know, crash. Where, right. Whereas where you when get you shot out of a can, you know, you're like, okay, I'm gonna go hit the, you know, I'm gonna crash. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not looking to take necessary risks as far as like that, but, um, you know, I mean, just a wild group of guys and and gals, uh, and I went to multiple states covering it for, for multiple different weekends for them. And, That's uh, pretty cool. It was a lot of fun. I wonder uh, if there's anything to get your, you know, adrenaline going that, uh, you know, just really like you, you can do a lot, like you can do over and over again, like riding a motorcycle, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, uh, love, I mean, what I'd love to do is uh, buy an RV and have a motorcycle in the trailer and just go disappear. Wow. <laughs> that's something that's something at some point. That uh, kind of but that's kind of alluring to everybody, I think. I mean, I would like uh maybe not the motorcycle part, but I like an RV and a car trailer. I actually had an RV when I lived in Colorado as a kid, yeah. uh right out of college. I had a construction company with a buddy and I bought an RV that I used to go disappear disappear up into the Rocky Mountains. That's pretty cool. It, that's the way to travel, man. It's is a there, lot of fun. Is there anything you won't do? Uh, well, won't, no, I mean, I, you know, I'm not afraid of heights, I've done, uh um, That's what I mean, is there anything that scares you at all, like, is there, or, or that you say, oh, I don't want to uh, no, I mean, we talked about this last time, um, you know, like, I mean, I'd go into a shark cage, but, like, you know, going swimming with sharks, nah, you just ask me. I just saw that you. this weekend, by yeah. the way. I mean, I'm I have no problem going into a shark cage, I wouldn't give a shit, but, but, like, you know, I watched the I Mythbusters. They 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 chum the water yeah, and then went in, you saw this one? Yeah, I saw some of that. And, and, and they're, they go in... You know, the, the certain crazy. things, yeah, I, like, and again, uh, very phys- I'm a very physical person, and on the ground, when I'm, I got my feet on the ground, I, I always feel like I, I can at least have some control in the situation, yeah. even if it gets completely out of my control, at least I have something. There's nothing you can do with Once 20 in, sharks Yeah, around. yeah, I mean, I love to swim and whatnot, I love the ocean, but I tell you, you start getting in deep water where you can't see the bottom, you can't see that far, and you're like... I don't know, man. This is not my territory. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. So you watch this. I don't belong here. This was insane. <laughs> they chum the water, okay, and then they were trying shark repellent. Well, if that doesn't work, let's... Yeah. Uh, oh. or they put on chain mail yeah. and say, well, how far can it bite in? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah how no. far can it bite in? Yeah. I mean, I mean again, I, I mean, I've been shot at. I've been, you know, you name it as far as, uh, I, you know, I'm not afraid of dying. It's not that I want to. I don't have a death wish. Um, you know, but I won't, I will not get on my hands and knees and cry and beg for my life either. It's like... I've had a gun put to the back of my head with a hammer cocked. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, what no. was that situation? That actually was a, uh, a road rage situation of a retired cop that I think saw my NYP plates, which is New York Press, and yeah. uh, you know, I think he was drunk but didn't like it, and he started to sort of really kind of attack me on the vehicle, and we, I, so I pulled off, and he got out, and he pulled a gun on me, and really, you know, I told him go fuck himself. Wow. And I said, you know, why don't you get rid of the gun, and we'll fucking deal with this like men. And he said, you know, fuck you. And I am a man. Yeah, and he put it, you know, and he wouldn't get close enough to me to get, you know, that I could try to get the gun from him, and then, uh, you know, so. So what happened after that? Oh, it, well, state troopers showed up, and they actually, uh, they asked me, like, do I want to press charges? I, and they, they uh, they're New York State troopers, and he was a retired NYPD, and they, mm-hmm. they, they don't really get along as far as territory. Sure. They were pissed. Because uh, the eight of them showed up, a helicopter, the whole thing. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. What did people on the road call? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody called. Yeah. And uh, so. You know, How long again, did this go on for? Uh, a couple hours. So they a brought a couple us, of hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the actual event, uh, you know, was only wasn't that long, but I mean the whole thing, because they they then brought us down and they asked sort of eventually once they no, figured no, no, out what I, was going on, you yeah. know, and I was you know the guy just was like foaming at the mouth, and I was like, look at this fucking asshole, I was, yeah. like, you know, because they put me in cuffs at first because they thought I had a weapon. Right. And I was like, they searched me and there was nothing. And they were like, oh, shit. And especially being a member of you know, New York Post, I was on right. the way to do a job. And they were like, uh-oh. And I was Oopsie. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, hey, man. And I was like, this, this guy went after me, man. You and, know? and and I mean, but you're, see, I'd be scared that they wouldn't believe you. They'd believe him, uh, although he did have his gun out. Yeah, I told the but, truth. But I mean, like, what happened with the, the, the guy got the gun out. All right, so, how, well, so, all right yeah. well, so what happened? So he had, it was a. Looked like a 38, yeah. um, you know, and I, and I could see him. It was it was loaded, and so he gets out. And he's but he starts barking orders, and I could tell the way he was barking orders that he was probably a cop or so yeah. he was something, you know. And so I was just sitting, I was, you know, I'm like, are you fucking? And I literally, so we're he's behind his door, you know, and I get out, you know. Oh, he's definitely a cop. You know, no, he's behind his door. I'm like, and who's he thinking he is? TJ like, Hooker? Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, and he's like, get the fuck down, you motherfucker. I was like. Fuck you! Fuck off! Yeah, and you know, I was like bullshit. It was like I was really, I really was pissed off. Yeah. So he starts getting closer to me. And he's like, "Get the fuck down! I'm gonna fucking shoot you." I was like, "Fucking go ahead, shoot me, you fucking asshole!" It was like you're a fucking pussy. 
I really, and it was You're just, antagonizing which is, him. I, it was not the smartest thing to do, but I also, I didn't think he had, I mean. This does not go to your tactics of diffusing <laughs> a situation. Yeah, fuck him, man. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna, and, so, and so then he, he I, I could tell he wasn't going to pull the trigger. I mean, it really had the, you know. You had but, a but feeling. But he was, yeah, the feeling wasn't going to, you know, pull the trigger, but he also, you know, had the hammer cocked. So he won't get close enough to me where I could try to, you know, knock it out his, of his yeah, not, yeah. you know, move and grab him. So then he finally, you know, he's like, turn the fuck around. And then finally I was like, all right, you know, I, I could hear, you know, it sounded like a chopper's coming. I was like, nah, whatever, this is getting old. So he fucking turned around, he kicks me in the back of the leg, drops me to one knee, kicks me in the other one, kicks me in the lower back, kicks me in the back of the neck. So now I'm on the ground and he fucking jams the gun in the back of my head. And, and you hear a chopper now at this point. Well, not, well, something's coming. But I'm just kind of, at this point, I'm like, all right, well, the guy, you know, the fuck, this is getting old. So he jams the back of my head. He's like, I'm gonna blow your fucking head off. I'm like, go ahead, you fucking pussy. Let's see if you got the fucking nuts. <laughs> You know? You're insane. Nah, That's insane, I think. Because I would have said, I, I probably would have tried to talk him back for my fucking life for some prick like that. But, but you could have at least, like, said Fuck something. Him. You could tell he wasn't going to pull the trigger. Really? Well, 50, it, 50, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe 60, 40. What if his finger but, slipped? Nah. So, so what happens? So the cops get there. So they get there, yeah. and, you know, they pull, you know, pull him off. They pick me up. They cuff me, throw him back in the car. And he's, like, foaming at the mouth. You know, and I'm just, wait, wait, and how, I totally how complied. Long, how long did the whole, like, He's got the gun drawn thing go. Like, is that 10 minutes? Felt like 15, but it was probably maybe. They got know, there but, quick. Yeah, they got there pretty quick. All right. I mean, you know, we're on the side of a major highway. Right. Cars, you know, people going by. You see, you see, you see yeah. things happening. And, um, you know, so. You what know, was he driving? Uh, a Crown Vic? Like Chevy a, No, Caprice? no, no, no. It was like a, it was a SUV. It was like a sort of a silver gold color. Okay. Uh, SUV of some sort. All right, and, and so then they call so anyway, you, they so, put you in so the back of the car. Yeah, and, no, but when they pick me up, they're, they're like, I'm like, hey man, I was like, listen, I was like, look, just keep this motherfucking crazy son of a bitch away from me. And he's all literally foaming at the mouth and whatnot. And did uh, you ask if he had rabies? Did you, yeah, did no, you say no, like, no, hey, no, I just asked like, for rabies. I was like, you know, and he kept fucking. He was like, yeah, motherfucker, right, 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 right. I was like, guys, listen, I was like, just whatever, just keep that piece of shit away from me. Yeah. Put me in the car, you know, and they they frisk me first and all that kind of stuff first. Um, and then they start searching my car and they find nothing. Yeah. And I, so I was like, guys, I told you, I'm on my way to a job from New York Post and this guy fucking attacks me on the car, uh, you know, driving. Yeah. You know, like literally swerving his car at me, trying to hit me and whatnot. And uh, then started tail, you know, he started tailgating me really close. I sped up, he right on my ass and I slowed down to 30, 30 miles an hour in the right lane and he wouldn't move and I see him on the phone. So I don't know if he's calling in buddies or whatever. That's why I pulled over. Yeah. Cause like, I don't know if I'm going off to an exit and this guy's gonna keep following me and calling friends in or something sure. like that. So I'm like, He's one guy, fine, I'm gonna pull over on the side of the road right now, now and yeah. deal with him now. But of course he had a gun. But, so the troopers then take me out of the car, uncuff me, go, and they pull me side light and they're like, yeah, we got a problem. I'm like, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and not to them, but I was like, you know, and they're like, he's, you know, he, they, he's like, he's a retired NYPD and, um, you know, he's like, uh, you don't have a weapon? I was like, nope. And they were like, uh, yeah, so what do you wanna do? And I was like, what do you mean? So, they had us drive, they took, I can't remember, I think they had a, an escort of cars and me and him they separated us in car, but we were driving our vehicles. We ought yeah. to go down to their, their the troop, whatever they call it, the troop house. Barracks or Bar whatever. Yeah, yeah, troop barracks. And uh, that's when their uh, CO came out and you know, talked to me and he's like, well, so what do you want to do? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, do you want to press charges? So I was like, all right, no. I was like, I got a lot of friends who are cops. This guy's obviously got some problems, but I was like, you know, he's, and he said, he was like, we're frankly not very happy about this. I was like, he's like, these are our roads. You know, we don't, you know, we don't stand for this shit. And I was like, well, then I'll leave it in your hands. And then they left And what'd me. they do? I have no idea. I left. Wow. I left and I, you know, and then it called in and everybody's like, oh, you know, you, you know, you got to get a lawyer and sue. And it's like, sue for what? What am yeah. I going to fucking sue for? Right. You know, well, your life's in danger. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck am I going to sue for? You know, too wow. many people sue. Yeah. Well, yeah. that I agree with, yeah. for sure. You know, everybody and wants free money. I don't, I don't think you should have sued, but. But I, I went up and I did the job. <laughs> You did. <laughs> yeah. What, like an hour late? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Wow. Your heart so, must have been beating a little fast, no? Yeah. I mean, but not, uh, you know, not to the point where you, you know, again, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit there and be, you know, you don't beg for your life. I'm not going to. I probably would. Nah, you wouldn't. Nah, maybe not. No, because I mean, you know, what happens in that moment, because I've, I've had that a, a few times you know, overseas, yeah. you know, it happened in Africa when they have a kid with an AK-47. That's old. Oh, but no, but you sit there and it's, it's you know, listen, here, here, what are the options, you know, and how you're going to handle the situation. I mean, you know, it's, it's, 
you know, you smile, you know, and get talk your way out of it or what, you know, however, but it's either one, they're going to pull the trigger and you're dead. Two, they don't, don't pull the trigger and they take you, it's like, say, overseas, take you hostage, and then you're, that's going to be pretty miserable shit yeah. as far as torture, possibly. Oh, uh, yeah. Or, I you think know, I they said they're going, all right, hopefully the State Department gets involved and gets me the fuck out of here. Hopefully it isn't too bad. Or three, they let you go. So, all right, so there's your three options. Once you accept that, like, okay, well, it's one of these three. Yeah. All right, well, roll with it. Wow. Then, you know? then did you tell the guy with the AK to go F himself? No. No, no, that I, I had a turban on and a beard and I, you know, I'm with uh, me and maintain aid workers. Yeah. And I was, you know, had paid documents saying I'm an aid worker. Of course, all my gear is hidden sure. because they, they, in the country I was in, they don't want journalists at all. Sure. So, but I'm, I'm here, I am 6'3", and they're here, everybody else is your like height, height. height. And they're going, you CIA, and I'm like, you know, you military. I'm like, no, 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 maintain aid worker, just smiling. You, you take off like, the aviator yeah. shades. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a turban on and a beard, and I'm like, no, no, no. And they're like, you CIA, you, you military, you, mil you know. And I'm like, just holding them. I'm like, no, man, trying to work or just smiling. And they had a little, you know, young kid with AK just sitting there pointing, pointing at me, waiting to, for instructions whether to pull yeah. the trigger or not. I just, you know, and just again, just sat down and just kept a smile up and just saying, no, 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 here's, here's paperwork. Yeah. Everything's okay. Wow. You know, eventually said, oh, okay, go, get out of here. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. No, that's when you find out what you're made of. I bet. <laughs> I bet, I bet uh, Jess is glad when you come home at night. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, this side of stuff doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. But well, you, you met Jack here earlier in the day. He came uh, by. That was pretty cool. Yeah. That's my son. Yeah. Just fucking talk about mini-me. <laughs> really, it's adorable. I mean, it's little you with, with hair. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> cute kid. Really, really cute kid. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, it's fantastic yeah. stuff. Thank you going to have any more? Uh, probably not. No? Yeah, well, I, we'd like much. to. <laughs> it costs too much. <laughs> Uh, we'd like to, but uh, you know, we had to do this through in vitro, so there was oh, there's okay. nothing so there's nothing left. Okay, okay. And can't go back. Hey, you got a beautiful son. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely very much. beautiful son. I mean, seriously, thank you. Your and wife, I hope your wife it, is wonderful. I hope that you guys, if if that's what you want, I hope one day you it scares guys scares the crap out of us. It should. Oh, it scares the crap out of us, man. You know, I was abandoned by my father, and oh. it's like I don't, you know, I don't think I have that in me. But if I do, I don't know. What like, what if the kid's an asshole? I don't like it. It's like, oh, what do you do? You're stuck with it forever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You're stuck with yeah. it. That's period, period. You know, and and there will and there's be also, moments. There's just too many people in the world as it is. Like, what, yeah. what we need to add more? Yeah, I you don't know. know. But we're talking. About, I, I, we want to. It just scares the crap out of us. Well, it should, but it, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. And and you know what? There are going to be moments where you're not going to be happy with the kid, but. Yeah, you know what? Overall, what, you what I worry, you know, like being 65 and then going, shit, I wish we did. Right. You know what I mean? And when, when the chances come and gone. It's true. So, but then I, I want to talk to you once you have kids about your perspective <laughs> on everything because I think you, you'll listen, change. Listen, I'll still oh, bullshit. I'll still ride motorcycles. I'll still do what I you do. You might, but you'll 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 be a little bit more. No, careful. no, no. I already have uh, really good life life insurance policy. Yeah, there you go, with Jessica. So I'll just even get a little more. Whoa, <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> They you read the fine print and yeah. listen, you get killed in a war listen, zone. As long sorry. as I get, you know, give her like half a million in life insurance, you know. You're, you're, you're feeling good about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> All right, listen, thank you so much. You came in, we you wrapped talked up about here? Yeah, Beautiful. we're good. Uh, right. and, and listen, you, I hope everybody enjoyed this. They love um, you. They're the Terrifics and they love you. And, yeah, uh, you, you know, got a great crowd, so I, I hope they were pleased with this and found it uh, informative and entertaining, them, all that shit. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it, sometimes we got to talk about some really hard and serious yeah, things. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, you know, that's how we make sure that the next time... Yeah, we every day can't be talking about Back to the Future cars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Back to the Future cars were pretty cool, by the way. I bet. Yeah. You know, it, uh, it's sure. really interesting. Uh, people always ask me what the coolest thing I've done is, and it's always the last thing I've done, because I can't... It, it blurs well, that's why, yeah, no, that's why those yeah. questions put you in the spot. I'm like, shit. I, I was like, I've done such crazy, wacky cool stuff everything so this week it, it's, it's riding hard, yeah. in the so this delorean week was from back to the yeah, future there you go yeah. so the, the coolest thing you did this week right this yeah. week is what it has to <laughs> <Yeah>. be right <laughs> because i can't you know it all does blur together you know poon used to be great at that he would he worked here and he would be like hey remember that and I, oh yeah he was the quiet one who sat in the corner and he'd always remember the things that we did where i so can't I can throw it and then that sparks you and you go oh yeah oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and then i have a good story to tell but otherwise i'm like yeah no a lot of people told me like i should have been writing all this stuff down i could write a book and it's like it's too many books everybody yeah. has a fucking book like who gives a shit yeah exactly <laughs> you're gonna read mine i'm not that important <laughs> yeah <laughs> Again, everybody thinks it's so, so important, but everybody's got to put out a book. That's cool. what I, I think is people always tell me I should write a book. I've had all these cool experiences. You've had all these cool experiences. I'm like, what? Uh, who would write this down? Who would want to read this? Who cares? Yeah. Who gives a shit? Exactly. And then the things they want to know, I don't 
it's not that I don't want to share, but I don't want to hurt other people by sharing them. Yeah. Like a lot of the athlete stuff that's gone down. Again, so the point of the day is none of us are that important. That is true. Yeah. But live, and, and live, but live right within your, your means as far as, you know, and, and just project positivity. I love that. And that's the best thing you can do. Yeah. Project positivity yeah. And, then, and then help. And no know, matter what, try to treat, treat everybody as the way you want to be treated, yeah. you know, even if they're treating you poorly. And I, I think that we learn that if something like this happens, whether it's Louisiana, New York, California, Idaho, Nebraska, that we as Americans have to figure out a way to help. And sometimes that's giving money. Sometimes that's uh, 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 resources, which are really important. Yeah, don't believe everything you hear. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and keep, not believing your everything eye, yeah, you hear. Keep your eyes yeah. open, your ears open. That's that's the most amazing part. Well, I know that the next time this happens, we'll have you to tell us what's going on. Absolutely, and then uh, hopefully we'll have it set up. Well, we have it set up, but yeah. uh, you we'll, know, we'll there, have it a little bit yeah, better. As we know, I'm not a tech guy, so hopefully I don't foul it up. <laughs> you, you know how to get internet, right? I mean, yeah, you know yeah, how to hook yeah, it up yeah, to yeah. Wi-Fi. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. Or plug, you can plug a cable into that computer. Fantastic. Yeah. Mike, this has been beautiful. Thanks, Matt. Thank you so much for thank having you. me. And everybody, thank you. you very much. Thank you, guys. You're the Terrifics. Tomorrow we're going to have uh, Back to Fun tomorrow. How about that? Uh, not Back to the Future, but Back to Fun. Um, and we'll have Aftershocks here talking about their latest products. That'll be cool. And the rest of the week's going to be a lot of fun as well. Uh, you're the Terrifics. You make me terrific special. And those Back to the Future videos that Matt was talking about should be uh, up on our YouTube page soon, but also... Uh, should be running in the cycle of live content uh, like in the next, I don't know, few hours, if not days. All right, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, thank you for Greg and Adam for doing a great job behind the scenes. Until tomorrow, be terrific.